Alright, g'day ladies and gents, and welcome to the Battletech Extended Mod. Thank you very much for waiting. Uh, sorry about that, I started up the stream. Jeez, it's been going for 14 minutes already and I've only just started. Uh, yeah, started up the stream, realised that I hadn't got a drink and hadn't made, made myself a cup of tea, so I thought I'd better go off and deal with that, otherwise I'm going to be really pissed with myself in about 10 minutes. How are you going, Tuppy? Oh, the flea is so adorable. Actually, yeah, I, li I like the flea. It's great mech. Um, Devil Risen, subscribe tier one for seven months, man. Thank you very much, mate. Um, yeah, someone said house call. So saying hello to everybody. Oh, taking a late lunch this evening. Will be a late one. Got a big project. Spec finished out. The door will be buggered if I'm doing it over the weekend. Oh, yeah, that's fair enough. Get it done and be finished with it <clears throat> save the weekend for yourself I'm, I'm hoping to actually be going to an air show on Sunday I think I hope I'll fit one of those in um, just ahead of time sorry if I'm sounding uh, if I sound a little uh, flatter than normal I'll, I'll try and not let it get to me I uh, had a little bit of uh, bad medical news regards to my eyes this week so I haven't really been doing a whole lot since then but uh, I did want to get this started. I have done a little bit of a test run on the Battletech Extended mod just to see how the intro works and everything else on it, and uh, I like it. I like this a lot. This is great. So uh, this is going to be a lot of fun, but we've got to start by creating our character, and we have to set up the rules of this particular campaign. So I've actually sort of already done the first part, or at least I, I, I've decided on a few factors already. So names and everything else are going to be easy. But first we have to turn uh, sort out the difficulty settings. Now this... Actually, I should probably check. Is the mic working fine, guys? Everybody can hear me? No problems whatsoever? should probably have checked that earlier on. I assume that everybody can. So... We need to set up our difficulty settings. Now, I'm not going to super try hard the hell out of this, because, um, well, the RNG in this mod is going to screw me over enough as it is. Uh, I don't need to give it too much help, but I am going to try and set the difficulty score multiplier down here to 1, which is its maximum. That's what we'll be looking for. Uh, for the Capellan Confederation, not a chance in hell. They are on my targets list. In fact, I already know where I'm going to be starting up on this one and what my theme is going to be. There's actually two themes involved. And Warhound says 5-5, five, five, so you can hear me well. Excellent. All right, so for starters, Iron Man mode's going on. We're doing that straight from the start. We'll just get that one out of the way right there. We are going to keep unequipped mechs on. So what this means is, in traditional Battletech, when you recover a mech, and you assemble it, it comes fully equipped in its stock configuration. So you get all the weapons and everything else installed on the mech as per default. Uh, default. We're not having that. Um, our mechs are going to be bare as a badger's ass. There's going to be nothing in them. It'll have armor and a working fission reaction with all four limbs attached, and that's it. Which is going to be a real pain in the ass at the start of the game, because we're not going to have the equipment to actually be able to fit out a lot of our mechs. It will be less of an issue later on, but it adds a little bit of something-something to the earlier stage. Uh, parts assembly for mechs, I'm going to leave it on four parts. Three is your standard. You can set it up to, I think you can go up to eight in this mod. We're going to leave it on four. I don't see the point in turning that up much higher. Um, it just That's just being a dick when you turn everything else up. Uh, randomized starting mechs we're leaving on, so I have no idea what we're going to be starting as. Starting year. Now, we have a lot of options here, going all the way to 3061. I will be going through that after I check everything else. So, overall difficulty. Now, this is where this gets really cool. So, your normal difficulty level is exactly what you would expect. Vanilla Battletech. Hard is the hard mode of Vanilla Battletech, exactly as you'd expect. Simulation, things start getting a little bit more interesting. The, uh, the mechs start getting extra components. And then you go to Simulation Plus, and this is what we're going to be playing on. So in Simulation Plus, it's not just your internal components and the parts that break down your mech, the five primary components. So left leg, right leg, torso, left leg. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, left leg, right leg, center torso, left, right torsos, left and right arms and head. 
Um, now they start getting subcomponents in them. So there is now the the actuators in the wrists of the hands of the mechs are modelled in game. The parts of the legs and the superstructure are modelled, and you can break these components during attacks. So you can destroy a mech's leg and its ability to walk at speed by blowing out its ability, or blowing out all the control points on its leg without actually blowing the mech, the leg off the mech. It adds a whole bunch of critical internal components. You can also do things like uh, critically damage the reactor shielding, and this will have effects of increasing heat and potentially uh, causing damage to the pilots. Uh, it adds additional components to the cockpit, um, it's entirely possible to break the life support in the cockpit in Simulation Plus, which on an Earth-like world doesn't really do a whole lot. In the vacuum of space is somewhat more troublesome, considering that mech warriors do not wear pressure suits because they would die due to the heat loading inside of their mech. Or at least m most Inner Sphere ones don't, because apparently liquid-cooled flight suits are lost tech, I think. <laughs> the clans do have suits. Although, they have shorts in their suits, so it's a, it's a Battletech thing. Enemy Strength Enforced. We'll leave this on normal for the moment. Mech Destruction, we are going to turn on. And that brings us up to 1.0 here. So Mech Destruction means, well, your mechs can actually be destroyed. If one of your mechs is destroyed, it shows up in the salvage pool like everything else. You don't automatically get your mech returned to your mech bay and then have to fix it. And it is entirely possible you can lose a mech completely. <clears throat> so we're going to leave that on. Um, advanced mech warriors, we'll leave that on normal. That's just how often or rare uh, skilled mech warriors show up in the pool. Nor they're pretty rare by default. Mostly you get ship mech warriors on every planet, and occasionally you'll come across a good one, so that's about fine. Contract payment will leave normal. You can turn it up to generous, or you can make it stingy. Mech warrior progression by default is set to slow. You can choose very slow or normal. We're going to leave it on slow. This is how quickly you earn experience points, so it will take longer to actually max out your pilots. That's fine. We're going to be playing for quite a few years here. Or at least in-game. I'm hoping we're not playing this mod for quite a few years. Well, you know what I mean. Lethality will leave as is. Uh, on by When it's on, as I recall, lethality, basically any hits to the head are guaranteed, like what would be considered a kill. There's no chance your pilot might survive a devastating head hit. Everything that hits the head is going to kill the pilot. So um, I like leaving that up to chance. Sometimes our pilot will get turned into a red smear that needs to be removed with a sponge. Other times, he gets out and has to spend six months in hospital, but he survives. And the last one, of course, no rare salvage, which we will keep off, because occasionally mechs have rare salvage, and you should be able to salvage it, rather than just having it removed. All right, so that leaves two parts left. Uh, Rando, start with an Atlas. No, it doesn't quite work that way, I'm afraid. Uh, I think the heaviest mech you can get in the random start is 45 tons. I don't even think you can get the Shadow Hawk that starts that you start the campaign with. I think it's a forty-five ton maximum that you can potentially get, and most of the time you won't get that high. So, yeah, that's that's your startings. Now, we've got to pick a starting year, and we have a lot of options here. Ah, shit! What do I do then? All right, so we have got twenty-five. 28, 30, 34, 39, 47, 49, 53, 57, 59, and 61. So we have a couple of key dates that we are looking for here. Now, 2025 is the point that vanilla Battletech is played in, which is the end of the Third Succession War. So you're playing the gap between the Third and the Fourth Succession War. The Fourth Succession War starts in 2028. That goes for a couple of years, and then it comes to an end, and then there's sort of a lull period with a lot of small fighting in the 30s, up until you hit 30, 39. Now, actually, sorry, 2028 is also when the Federated Commonwealth was established, so there's a change over there. Then you jump into 30, 39, that's the next major one, which is the War of 30, 39, which is when the Draconis Combine invaded the Federated Commonwealth. So that's our next one. Then... 
you want to get into the clan stuff. You've got a bit of a gap there as well. And you go to 3048, which is when the outbound light, which is the, uh, the oh, what was it again? The, uh, the Exploration Core, uh, Deep Space Research Vessel, accidentally stumbled onto Clan Smoke Jaguar's homeworld. And uh, it was destroyed, but that was what triggered off the start of the clan invasion. 3049, the clans take the periphery and start the invasion of the inner sphere right towards the end of it. And 3050 is the main start for the clan invasion period. So eventually we do want to play down to the clans, but I don't want to start right on the clans. I'm actually thinking, 2025 we've played to, I'm thinking 2028, the start of the fourth succession war. Actually, we've, oh, it's actually got pop-ups. So uh, 2028, fourth succession war, uh, 3030, the St. Ives succession, 3034, the Rachel uh, independence, the war of 3039, the Helm memory core is 3047. That's when you start finding some of the lost tech from the, uh, the Star League actually starts making a return from the Helm memory core. Uh, that was a, basically a massive computer archive that was discovered by the Grey Death Legion that contained a lot of the lost designs and you know, op essentially operations manuals and instructions on how to build a large amount of lost tech and started to bring some of the rarer mechs started to be manufactured again and things that were lost started to return. And yeah, 3049 is the technical start of the clan invasion. 3049, the periphery was taken and I think it was December 3049 that the clans took the first planets of the inner sphere. Um, yeah, Tukiad at 3057, and then we play all the way up through Operation Bulldog, which is the destruction of Clan Smoke Jaguar, and into 3061, which is the start, or the prior period, early period, to what would become the Fedcom Civil War, which is what we'll be playing in the next mod. Uh, so, yeah, that is our breakdown. I'm thinking we start at 3028. We skipped 3025, we've played through that in the in the standard campaign we'll jump up to a new mercenary company in 3028 uh top of the ducky yeah now thank you very much for the subscription mate uh not capellans so federated sons then uh kind of i'm actually th well no not really i'm actually thinking about starting down in davian space and the reason is because of the type of character that I'm particularly wanting to make, and they kind of start and hang around in Davian space. Besides, it's been a long time since I've gone and started uh, killing Draconis Combine, and <sighs> generally Steiner and Marek are my two starting forces. I, I like Steiner and I like Marek. The problem is Steiner and Marek don't like one another, and I'm likely to be stuck on the border between them, and one way or another I'm going to have to kill the other side. So I'm thinking we'll start in Davian space... We do have some options here. I should probably go through them all. So we've got Steiner, Davian, uh, which is lower right-hand corner of the Inner Sphere, Corita, which is the Draconis Combine, Marek, which is underneath uh, Steiner Space, which is top left, Lau, Rashalg, the Turian, the Majesty, Arano. We can play the Aranos again, uh, as we did in the campaign. St. Ives, the Outworlds uh, Federation. We can play no faction. We can play as the SLDF Cash or as an established mercenary unit. Um, we're not playing in any of those. We're going to do Davian, start from scratch, in 3028. And that's, I, th I think that should be a fun start. We get to play the, uh, essentially, the Fourth Succession War, and then roll on from there. Uh, oh, I've been offered an FT contract upgrade from my PPT contract. I have no idea what the short ones are for, Devil, but uh, I take it that is a good thing, so Congratulations. Uh, Tuppy the Ducky, Comstar explored a ship outbound light was captured and the crew was tortured for information, which the Smoke Jaguar was used as evidence that the Inner Sphere was going to invade them, therefore they should invade the Inner Sphere before it was too late. Yeah, and the outbound light was destroyed in orbit after the crew was taken. Oh yeah, full time from, uh, yeah, permanent part time. Okay, now the Anacrums make sense. Okay, no, con congratulations. Nailing full time work is, is the best thing. It is a great feeling. Uh, no, that's it. That's all I need. So difficulty level one, I think that's all right. 28 Davian. Okay, so we start game, and now we should be creating our pilot. Yeah, now that's great news, man. Now start saving away. Don't blow all the extra cash you make on, on crap. 
that's generally the first thing. Okay, all right, so the first weekend, providing it doesn't interfere with work, go have a drink. You know, celebrate. But after that, start putting it aside. Be smart with your money. Yeah, that's what the parents said. Yeah, it's, I hate the fact that I'm sounding... Well, I am a parent. <laughs> I've got more than a few kids now, so... But uh, I hate the fact that I sound like my parents, and at the same time, I wish my parents had spoken to me more like I speak to my kids now. <laughs> Don't... Don't piss your money against a wall every weekend, Mags. Put it somewhere and save it. Do the right thing. Do the smart thing. Of course, I never did any of that. I pissed it all against a wall, which is why I'm saying don't. <laughs> I, I, I've done it. It uh, it would be I would be a much better in a much better position now if I didn't. Uh. Alright, so it takes a little bit longer to load up here at the moment. Um, yeah, anyways, I did mention earlier on, I had some uh, bad medical news. Uh, I had my most recent eye exams over the last week, and uh, not good. Uh, the cornea in my eye has degenerated more. So uh, I, I sort of knew I was going to get that ahead of time. It's actually why there hasn't been a lot of flight sim stuff on the channel. It's because uh, even in VR, I'm struggling to see certain things now. So I sort of knew this was coming, um, but I've reached the point where my current um, current contact lenses that I have to use, or the one for my right eye at least, that allows me to see, uh, it's not working the way as it should. And unfortunately, in the last two years, at the start of 2020, I was supposed to go in and start having talks about potentially getting surgery done. But because of COVID, I wasn't able to do that in 2020. All uh, you know, non-necessary surgeries were off the table, and the same was in 2021. So after this test, we're supposed to trigger off discussions for that here now. And so I found out after I got my tests, my to uh, topography scans back um, on Thursday, I am now beyond the ability for surgery to help me. At least for the surgeries that were available to me at the moment. So, uh, yeah. Um, brings a few things into question, because there's a whole bunch of things that I'm kind of known for and have been known for in the past that I'm struggling to do now. Um, and the flight sim stuff is kind of part of it. So, yeah. Not sure what I'm going to do. But anyways, that's uh, that's my problem to sort out. Anyways, characters' origins. Decades ago, your family came to the Reach from... And I already know the answer to all of these, so there's not going to be much of a debate. I'm creating a very specific character. You guys, some of you guys know the lore. I'm wondering whether or not you'll be able to pick up on this. So we're coming from the deep periphery. Our family... We struck out on our own. That's fine. And we became a frontier freelancer, Solaris Gladiator, just an Innisfear mercenary. See, so yeah, we're an Innisfear mercenary. Now, edit name and appearance. So we're going to be a he for this one. And this is where we get a little bit fun, because first name's going to be Connor. Now, here's your first one, and I know a bunch of you are going to try and go to Sana, or it'll be interesting to see how many recognize this name straight away. McEvity. And we're going to go for Call Sign Claymore. Now, facial features don't really matter too much here, it's just for the portrait, but we will customize it a little bit just because we can. Um, skin tone seems about right. We do want to make the hair a little bit red. Uh, what do we got here? Yeah, we go a little bit red there. We're going to want a little bit of a beard going on. Not, not fond of that hairstyle. We'll, uh, we'll play around with these a little bit. 
You just go for a standard shortcut with us. Well, actually, no, we we'll, might come back to that. Facial hair. We definitely gotta have a little bit of a beard. Probably a touch too much. Probably a touch too much. That one there. And let's make yourself a little bit, a uh, little bit scruffier on the top of the head as well. Yeah, that'll do. We don't want to appear too old here. Uh, Art of stuttering and know nothing about battle tech, I'm afraid. Uh, Tuppy the ducky, a lone wolf, you could say. No, 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 not wolf. Oh, Wolf, go, go back and check that last name again. Uh, te technically, I should become the most wanted man in the inner sphere when I encounter the clans. Just on my name. Um, don't need to worry about tattoos. Yeah, that, that lights up the red a little bit better, and I generally like... There. Skin, yeah, leave skin as is. Leave everything else as is. Yeah, that'll do. A bit, bit of a red. That works. Yeah. Yeah, McEvity. McEvity should ring a little bit of a bell. And, uh, yeah, there, there were some clues that I've dropped in there. The other one, of course, the, uh, the don't worry about the first name too much. I'm um, Connor, Connor and Claymore. Uh, yeah, Connor McLeod of the Clan McLeod. It's nothing more than a Highlander reference that I decided to put in there because I couldn't think of anything else. But we're going to leave that as it is. But, yeah, McEvity. Try not to cheat, but if you can't work it out, go and have a look. I thought I'd have a little bit of fun with this. Um, Alright, so that has a setup. Now, the Agur and Reach stuff here is just from the campaign. It doesn't matter, or from the default game. So well, we're going to have two gunnery, three piloting, four tactics, two guts. So it's not actually a perfect start. Ideally, I would want higher gunnery, um, but I'm trading it for the higher tactics. So that's what we're going to do. Or actually, do I really want to make it that hard on myself initially? Actually, no, it won't take that many points. Not that many successful missions to get gunnery. All right, so that is our character. We confirm, and we are going in. Is it McEvity one of the name of one of the Black Watch leaders? Yes. Uh, it does pop up there, but it's not the only place it pops up. It's a, it's a name that was around the Inner Sphere and the SLDF quite a bit at one point. And uh, Tuppy the Ducky, weren't they annihilated? Well, not all of them. Now, I said a couple of times it would be sheer folly if I didn't get it. A mercenary's career. You have everything an industrious mercenary commander could want. A crew of talented misfits, a lance of ancient battle mechs, and a derelict cargo ship to call home. Yes, the Argo has now been downgraded to just a cargo ship. Uh, the one thing, to finish a mission in one piece, more or less, but it's another to keep the mech warriors happy and healthy, your mechs patched up and ready for action, and your balance sheet firmly in the black. As rumours of another war of succession intensify, the Mercenary Review Board announces new evaluation protocols to assess mercenary companies of the periphery with a score. Okay, so, here we go. Let's have a look and see what we've got. So, random roll out of the mech, mech bay. What do we get? Uh, also, the mechs that we get change as options depending on where we start. So first we got a falcon. Oh god that's ugly. That is a very old mech. So small laser, medium laser, it's jump jet capable. 30 tons. This is a bad roll. 30, 35, 30, 20, 20. Looks like we got an urban mech, so that's not bad though. 
uh, small laser and an MG. So two MGs, two small lasers, and a medium laser. That's all the Falcon brings to the table. We have a fire starter. This isn't so terrible. So four flamers, two MGs, and two medium lasers and jump jets. Uh, it's an AC-10 Urbamech. Ugh. Oh well. It's still an Urbamech. We, we got our Urbi. That looks like someone's first 3D print. This... What this is... And this is actually probably a pretty accurate representation, I should probably add. Uh, what this is, is a mech that... A 3D model for a mech that is based on a design that hasn't gone through the MechWarrior Online redesign process. The mechs that you see that have been reworked for MechWarrior Online, a lot of them look something like this beforehand. And for all the mechs that MechWarrior Online has done, which are the main mechs you see in Battletech and the mechs you of course see in MechWarrior 5, that sort of redesign process that they've all run through, um, for all the mechs that they've done, they haven't done half of the mechs that are actually designed and exist within the Battletech universe. There are thousands of designs of different mechs. So this is, looks more to me like somebody looking at the original artwork and then doing their best to create a 3D model. If I had to give any real complaint about this for what it is, I would say it looks too clean. You know, you know look, at, look at their... The, the redesigned fire starter here. Um, this is one thing the Battletech has going for it over some MechWarrior 5 and everything else. See, it looks like it's just like it's a bit knocked around up here and the paint's a bit scuffed and even here in its perfectly repaired configuration it looks a bit looks a bit ratty in some areas. That's what a mech should look like. This looks like it's just rolled off the production line on Pick Your Home, on Pick Your, uh, Pick Your Maintenance Planet. So um, clearly we've gotten that one out of a storage locker somewhere and it's never actually been used. Yeah, but that, that's its that's its uh, that's probably its biggest issue, and it's impressive that the uh, the the 3D modelers that did work for the mod and put together the mechs for the mod actually went back to original artworks and and uh, and used them as references to build 3D models. So we have a wasp. Now this is another new addition, I believe, to the mod. Um, jump jet, small, 20 tons, medium laser, and a flamer on this one. Okay, so that is a 1D variant. I think the 1A Wasp, uh, same configuration. Actually, this one's better. Medium laser, two small lasers and a flamer. Actually, I don't mind this one. The um, the 1A variant has a medium laser and an SRM4. That's it. Two smalls and a flamer is actually not bad. Uh, keep in mind with this mod, you can actually fire the flamers and the small lasers without having to go into melee. You can use them as just close range weapons. So, oh, oh no, 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 no. Oh, we, 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 ro we, uh, we rolled snake eyes on the locust, guys. We got the medium laser and we got an L, I got two LRM 5s with LRM ammo. This is possibly the worst variant of the four variants of the locust you can actually get. It is terrible. As the LRMs, it's like, yeah, it's 10 missiles, a volley, but you're going to ammo out really quickly. You've only got 120 rounds between them. And it's not, it's not really enough damage. The one you really want, there's two variants. One has triple medium lasers on it. That is lethal. And there is another version that's running twin machine guns, twin medium lasers... And I think it's got an SRM4 as well. That does a lot of damage. This, yeah, we're going to have to find a replacement for this one. Uh, will we be seeing any battle suits and or armor? In this mod, armor and yes, I believe battle suits are apart. However, the battle suits, which are elementals, don't show up until the clan invasion. Because Inner, the Inner Sphere battle suits, actually, I think in the Inner Sphere. Uh, elementals don't show up until after the clan invasion. Um, they just they just weren't a thing early on. They, the Inner Sphere could barely build mechs and remember how to build the mechs that they already had and maintain the mechs they already had. Building miniaturized versions of them was beyond their ability. 
but vehicles definitely do show up. Uh, are you going to be calling my ship the Nautilus? I'm not actually sure what I'm going to call the ship. The ship's just going to be referenced as the Argo, but we are going to have to rename ourselves, which we'll do in a second, and recolor ourselves. And I have an idea for that as well, which is the finishing touch to my uh, my character creation, by the way. Just wanted to see what we have. So, yeah, we've got a Falcon. We've got the Firestarter. We've got the R60 variant of the Urban Mech, which it's... It's an AC-10 on legs with a small laser, it's not terrible, but if I was going to have an urban mech in my lineup, I would rather the AC-20 variant, you know, something where I can actually slug shit in the face and it would stay that way. Um, although this is probably better in terms of ammunition. We got the Wasp, which we got a really good variant of. I haven't seen this variant before, but that's actually not bad for what we're going to be doing with it. For 20 ton, uh, 20 ton mech, that's a lot of firepower. But uh, yeah, we rolled Snake Eyes on the Locust, so... Eh. Well, it's a shame, because I actually like the Locust. Now, Captain's Quarters. We do need to configure, uh, finish the final touches for our Lance, so we are going to configure our Lance, and we are going to do a little bit of a rename, which I've already worked out. Because I am... McCluskey's Fus uh, McEvity's uh, Fusiliers. We are going to be basing our lance on one of the, the like the supported mercenaries that are part of the Northwind Highlanders, and they are based out of Davian Space, not far from Terra on the planet Northwind. So we're going to be operating in around that area for a start, or at least that's where I'm going to be heading towards, depending on where the game actually spawns us in. Hopefully, we're at least on the Draconis Combine border. Now, I do need an icon to put on the side. Eh, no, none of those, none of those. I really should have got a mod for more of these. I haven't been able to find a good mod that's just, uh... That's just new icons. Some of these are really crap. Like, who's going to use some of these? Yeah, I guess we just go for blue shields. That works. That works. Yeah, we'll go with that. Uh, colours. This is all we get in terms of camouflage. For those who haven't seen this part before. You can change the top colour. You can change the bottom colour. And you can change the highlight. That's it. I do like the fact that you're painting a little model mech on your uh, on your, your tabletop here. And that's how you're working out your uh, your, your markings. That's, that's always been really cute to me. But... Uh, could have done with some camo options beyond the ones that show up in the mech bay. And, and, you know, a few other things, but yeah, that's all we've got. So we're just going to go for blue mechs for the moment. Alright, so, go back to mech bay. Yeah, that's that's not looking any better in blue. But yeah, alright, there we go, done. Now, we need missions. Uh, but yeah, what I was saying before, so we won't see anything like that until after the clan invasion, but we will definitely see armor, and armor is an option. I have no idea how to buy armor, how to salvage armor, how to deploy armor, I just know it is supposed to be part of the mod, and it's entirely possible we can have armor. But, uh, that's all I've got. And it looks, actually, probably should check that first, although it looks like we're where we want to be. Um, yeah, we can skip that out. Again, small change from the uh, from the non-modded version of the game. This is our space now. So we've got this is uh, Draconis Combine space. Um, so Karita, this is uh, Lyrian territory. So Steiner, that's Marek. Uh, when we were playing the previous campaign, this section of space here, and you can see, there's not quite as many planets which is a little disappointing. It means not every world is actually represented on this map, but it's got all the major ones. But uh, this section of space here, that was the section of space that the entirety of the default Battletech campaign is played in. That's it there. That's all you get. The bottom section of the, the Marek border here, you get through here, and that's it. So we've got a little bit more space here to play with. And no, we are in completely the wrong side. We're down here on the edge of the periphery. 
but we've got Draconis Combine, four misses against the Draconis Combine down here, which is interesting. All right, well, fair enough, we'll roll with that. I'm not going to go jumping to the other side of Davy in space. I was hoping to spawn up here, because if we go through, it should be... Okay, that's Terra, so there's Earth. That one, I think. No, that's Helen. It'll be around here. Quinton. Northwind. There it is. Northwind. Knew it was in there somewhere. That's the home planet of the Northwind Highlanders. Oh, and for those who have been playing, watching the MechWarrior 4 campaign, there is Solaris. So that's where Solaris 7 takes place. Anyways, we're not jumping anywhere, so we will go and find ourselves a mission. Holy terror. Hey, hey. This is, uh, this is not 40k, and I'm also not Comstar. Fuck Comstar. It's not Holy Terror. It's just Terror. Although if I was Comstar, I'd be fairly high ranking. Uh, just for those who don't know the law, Comstar's headquarters is based just outside of Sydney. <laughs> Comstar's based in Australia. <laughs> Which explains kind of why there's such a prick about telecommunications. Alright, so our options here... We're looking at low-scale missions. We've got a very, very, very light lance. Uh, our, our deployment's probably going to be under 55 tons. So, um, like these one and a half skulls, the difficulty level in this entire game, even before our difficulty levels were the options we selected at the start, has jumped. This mod is much harder. And then I've turned it up to 11 by going for the one level, uh, one uh, the the one point um, difficulty rating. So this is. Yeah, we don't mess around until we've got better, uh, got better mods, uh, better mechs rather. We do have Federated Suns mission here in Night. Over the past few weeks, we've been engaged in small stage skirmishes with the Turians. I don't care about the Turians, so that's cool. Around Lindsay, the company commander must feel that they can't continue their campaign because they've requested a jewel to claim a local Ford base. Little do they know that we recently ran out of supplies, so we've very much taken them up on their offer. Uh, this is where you come in. We need you to win this for us, Commander. No ammo left. What kind of idiot sets up their supply lines? Let's clean this jewel up and cash in, Commander. <laughs> what kind of idiot set up their supply lines? I bet he was Russian. All right, so we're going to do this one. So solo jewel. It's actually a one-on-one -on -one mech engagement. So there will only be my mech and one more. Uh, chances of actually recovering anything out of this is not good. Uh, we can get one four. But we don't have anywhere near the skill or the capability of actually getting a perfect kill. Ah, yes, a couple of things we need to talk about in regards to mechs, although we'll do that, we'll do that later. We'll go for a, yeah, let's go for full money, 169,000, we're at 1 million at the moment. We need to start racking up some cash pretty quickly. I oh, need to get it up to 1.5 to 2 mil. And this is going to piss off the, Tutor uh, the Torian Concordant, which is good. I'm cool with that, because fuck Torians. Now, I'm going to take my pilot out for a start, and we are going to go with a fire starter, because that is straight up the best mech we have at the moment. Yeah, we'll just go with the fire starter. So that's all we need to do. 35 ton drop. Uh, over here, drop cost is waived. Yes, you actually have to pay to drop in this. There is an expense in regards to drops, which I do like. Um, and we'll deploy <laughs> Comstar, you literally have no other choice. Exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah, Vlad did it again. Um, Alright, so, a couple of things about recovering mechs in this sort of change from the standard game. First things first, if you can get a pilot to br uh, break a pilot's morale, morale is now a factor inside of each of the missions, they will eject. Um, ejecting will destroy the head of a mech but it doesn't mean you get to recover the entirety of the mech. To recover a mech intact, as in, you know, one-shot kill it, instantly get a full recovery on the mech, you have to kill the pilot in the cockpit, however, you cannot destroy the head. The pilot must die inside of the mech without the mech, mech's head actually being destroyed completely. 
They must have at least one structure remaining. If you destroy the mech's head, you only get two parts of the mech. If you take out both of its legs, you get two parts of the mech. If you blow it anywhere else, it only gets one. Um, actually, I think... No. I think you can get two out of various torso combinations as well. But actually taking a mech clean and clear requires a very high skill pilot, and it requires a devastating hit to the head that does not destroy the head. So it's not enough to just go around and headshot all the mechs anymore. The, what we were doing with the Sniper Marauder in the last match, or in the last playthrough, Command interface not a viable strategy anymore. Well, not unless you can get just the right combination to pop the pilot without popping the mech. So things get harder to recover. We need four parts over three now, and it is harder to get those parts. And we, we just can't take a mech. Alright, so, terrain here, the enemy is on the far side. Uh, what do we got? Desert biome. Desert heat sinks, only 85% of their normal heat. This is good, we're in a fire starter, that's what we want. Let's head for the trees for a start. Low light conditions are applying, and I couldn't read that. Uh, low light conditions are applying too difficulty to weapons accuracy and a 10% movement reduction. And, yeah, some bonuses on the mech for not having hand actuators that uh, negatively affect our melee combat ability, but that's a default of the mech. That's because we just don't have hand actuators in a fire starter. So now there's a good chance on seeing an Atlas, a light mech will ship bricks. Not immediately... But, if that Atlas fires on the light mech and immediately peels away half its armor in a single volley, yeah, it's entirely possible the enemy pilot will just go, fuck this, I'm out, and eject from the mech in the middle of a match, or in the middle of engagement. He'll just bail on the spot. And this can happen to anything else as well. If you hit... Part of the reason why I brought the fire starter, a lot of flamers. If we start cooking a mech and start pushing its heat to the point that the cockpit becomes unbearable to the pilot... The pilot, it's entirely possible the pilot will bail out of his mech to avoid being roasted inside of it. Like, this is a factor now. The AI will not just sit in a mech as you're ripping it apart piece by piece. You'll, uh... Engaging target. This is going to be a tough one, too. No damage detected. These things are hard to hit, and we only have two uh, two gunnery on this pilot so far. I just took on an Annihilator in a flea with the machine guns in a 1v1 in MechWarrior Online and run, feeling good. Yeah, you, you can do it in this too. Like, if you are good enough and you, your evasion is high, you might be able to actually cripple the mech. But it's going to require a skilled pilot to do that, and if you, are, and if you take those hits... Uh, the enemy will bail out. Your pilots will sometimes bail out as well. That's I'll go into a little bit of more into that soon. Your mechs also now have perks on them that are related to the chassis types. All right. All Let's hope some of this heat hits. Left arm destroyed. On fire. Plus three heat on the locust. Enemy mech. Critical damage detected. AI trying to get into the rear arc. The AI is both smarter and more aggressive in this as well, I've noticed. Right, shoulder destroyed, so you can see all these little upper arm actuator destroyed. These are the internal sections of the mech. You can crack their hips, destroy leg actuators, and this will negatively affect the performance of the mech each time one of these is taken out. And that, that's what the uh, negative bonuses about hand actuators were. It was in regards to melee combat. Because of the flamers, the way this is all set up, the fixed forward arms on the fire starter, the fire starter does not have actuators for hands, which means it actually has a negative bonus here when it's doing melee combat because anything using its arms, it's directly ramming its weapon systems into the enemy mech rather than having something else that it's striking them with, another part of the chassis. And so there's a negative part there. 
This is all part of the mod now. Alright. So we've taken out one of its MGs at this point. We're not really doing much in regards to heat on it, it's just not generating enough. But the heat is definitely shaking it a bit. Damage minimal. And we do have a weight advantage on this one. Now unfortunately the locust just doesn't generate enough heat for us to cook it. Go left torso destroyed, pilot injured, we've improved to confident. So our morale's going up, his morale's getting more and more shaky. Oh, he lost some heat there, but he generated some as well, so we might have taken out a heat sink or damaged a heat sink. And flame it again, and yeah, our aim's not going to be great. Thankfully, the flamethrowers are good. Come on, Turian, I want you to punch out. Alright. Engaging jump jets. All weapons committed. Damn it, nothing broke. We missed with both of the medium lasers. The downside of only having two gunnery on a pilot is our actual base hit rating is actually really low. But AI is smart. The AI has actually backed itself up against a cliff, so we can't get into its rear arc here. So all I can do is move this way and fire into this side. All weapons committed. Six heat. We're slowly building heat up in it, but every time it moves, if it doesn't fire off all its weapons, Warning. Enemy in rear even arc. if it does fire the weapons it's got left, it's losing it. Alright. Now, we can get into their rear arc. And now, the, we, we actually got two combinations going on here. <clears throat> I wonder if I can actually bring it up. Um, will it bring me up if I hold? No. Well, we can see some of the extra components in here, though. So you can see center torso. We have the medium laser, MG ammo, the gyro. We have the engine shielding. Uh, right torso is just right torso. Legs. Right leg. We have the hip. We have the upper leg actuator, the lower leg actuator, and the foot. These can all be destroyed. The arm in this just has the MG, it has the shoulder, which we've already destroyed, and the upper arm actuator, and we've blown out the other side. So, you can see the extra components inside that you can cripple that negatively affect performance every time you do. And we're going to try and blow out the center. All committed. There we go. Pilot incapacitated. Enemy mech destroyed. We destroyed the engine. Unfortunately, he didn't want to reject. That's a shame. Mission successful. And fairly bidding for a bashal. That's not, uh, for a bashal. Uh, that's not very clanner of you. Uh, well, the the bid was thirty five tons. He chose to go under it. I I bid my thirty five tons, which was my limit. I couldn't have deployed anything heavier. That's just all I had, and they didn't announce what they were deploying. <laughs> That's exactly why those dual missions exist, however. When the clans show up, you are going to be able to do trials. That's why the jewels are a thing. I haven't checked to see whether or not you can actually enter the Solaris Championships. That would be nice. Anyways, 169-400 payout for this one. Uh, no damage to the fire starter because yeah, it's just a good mech. And the only part that was recovered was one part of the Locust. Which I think this is one of the better builds. That's the MG laser build. I think. So if we can get enough parts of that, I might actually use it to replace our LRM one.
Uh, despite the AI getting constantly in your rear, that was pretty clean win in terms of damage to you. Yeah, well, the Locust didn't have a lot, and the pilot really didn't, or the AI didn't really exploit it. But there was a bit difficult on our side to actually hit it. First, my pilots only got two gunnery. Now, gunnery increases your base chance to hit. So, ideally, it's the first thing you want to upgrade to 10, or it's one of the primary things you go for, because it... At, at 10, before anything is any negative or positive bonuses come into play, your chance to hit is at 100. And then you get yeah, positive and negative effects are applied to that, but that's what you're after. But one thing I haven't shown yet is if you look over the mechs here, you get a breakdown of exactly what the mechs are now, but you also get a couple of other bonuses to it. So you can now have pilots that get particularly comfortable with a neck, uh, with a mech, and so you'll get proficiency bonuses on them. That'll increase their familiarity with the mechs, and they'll get you know increased resolve generation, improved defensive capabilities, or improved gunnery, and that kind of stuff. The other thing is mechs have quirks. So the Falcon here, mech quirks, narrow low profile, plus one hit defense. So it's harder to hit because it's, you know, it's narrow and it's got a relatively low profile, obviously. Firestarter, mech quirks. Now it actually has some negative ones. Exposed weapons linkage. Support weapons in the arms of this unit can be crit through armor. Because the arms in this thing are exposed, because they're flamers, so they basically you've got giant fuel cables that are running up the arms to actually feed the flamers, and those are not inside of the armor, your arm weapons can take crit now take critical hits from weapons fire while you have completely undamaged armor and that's a negative quirk that the fire starter has which is something that it does actually have at least by tabletop rules uh the over mech extended torso twist the mech's angle of fire is extended by 120 degrees narrow low profile plus one hit defense uh, no minimal arms, plus two extra hit penalty when standing up, cannot sprint that round. So if it gets knocked over, it has trouble getting back up, and it can't move. Uh, well, it can't sprint. Mech quirks on the Wasp. Pretty simple one, easy to maintain, 25% faster repair speed, extended torso twist, mech's angle of fire is extended by 120 degrees. No negatives there, it's just cheaper to maintain, and it can twist its torso further so it has a wider attack angle on it. The Locust. Now this is why it was so hard to hit. Narrow low profile, so it's plus negative one hit to, uh, hit, to uh, hit defense. It has weak legs, so DFA self damage. Actually it's not showing one on this one. Right, that might only be on one of the other ones. The um, One of the versions of the Locust, and it might have been the last version that we were fighting, has a, an extra bonus in terms of evasion. Which basically means it's a real pain in the ass to hit, and then we've only got plus two gunnery, so we've only got a 20% base chance to hit at this point in time, or somewhere around that area. So our chance to hit is low, and then we're fighting a mech that's a pain in the ass to shoot in the first place. But yeah, some other ones. Yeah, so again, no arms on the Locust, so if it gets knocked over, hit penalty when standing up, cannot sprint that round, and the legs on the Locust are weak. So if we do uh, DFA, Death From Above, try and pull a Highlander Burial using jump jets with a Locust, um, it's entirely possible that we'll rip our legs off in the process of doing it. Um, oh, nice. So that was the tabletop thing I found out about recently. Yep, yeah, uh, makes the mechs a bit more distinct. Yeah, and it will change, because some variants of the same mech will have different quirks to other variants. So it makes the different variants a little bit more than... Not always but in some cases makes the different variants a little bit more than just having different weapons combinations on them. The mechs are actually configured slightly differently, and so they have different positives and negatives to them. And it, it affects what combination of mechs you might want to put together on a lance, because there's now a couple other things you've got to consider. So that is, that's, that's another cool feature. Now pilots, if we go up to the barracks, Nice, so I actually haven't looked at our pilot. So Claymore is mine. Uh, we got Cerberus, Drillbit, Grandmaster, that's a bit arrogant, and Hulk. Yeah. I like Hulk as a call sign. That's Commander? cool. Grandmaster sounds a bit digging. Drillbit is Waiting cool. for order. Right here. Cerberus. Eh, eh, bit poser. But anyways. Um, okay, so seven days. You'll notice the pilot's grayed out here. After compl after piloting a mission, you actually get fatigue on your pilots. So if you you can pilot them again, they're not injured, they're just fatigued for seven days. So you've got to rest the pilots. This forces you to rotate your pilots more often, including your own commander. 
if you fail to do so, they'll actually start getting, even if they don't take injuries, they'll actually start getting um, like negative to spirits, and they'll start making lower, uh, lower. They'll, they'll generate lower, not prestige, the um, uh, low, lower points generation for pulling off special attacks. They'll, they'll go into negative spirits if you keep just sending them into the battlefield over and over again. All right, I'm going to put points in. Uh, actually, put one point guts as well. It's not going to do anything at this level though. But oh, we can get an extra in there. Cool. Four, three, three, four. I'll take that. Mech warrior Beautiful. training complete. All right, that gets our base. Well, it's only, it's only eight percent. Wow, that's really low. Okay. Um, so yeah, you've got to rotate your pilots more often in what this. Can I do and for you? the pilots themselves. If we can. How do you bring it up? Here we go. All right, so you get different quirks on your on some of your pilots as well. So drill bit is a merchant. So it comes from a merchant cast and merchant cast background. So getting best prices on parts reduces the Argo upgrade prices by one percent and one percent of chance for five thousand C bills a day. So that's just a random thing that can happen. RNG spacer reduces the Argo's upkeep cost by one percent. Okay, so it's you know it's nothing major, one percent, but it's yeah every little bit is a little bit. Um, rebellious, you're not the boss of them. Negative one resolve. All right, so Grandmaster is going to be a pain in the ass. Noble reduces cost and upkeep of the upkeep of the Argo morale and med upgrades by one percent. Still probably going to piss him off because that negative one percent of Roman resolve is just going to be annoying. Commander Hulk, Klutz. Oh, okay, Hulk is going to go. Hulk, Klutz, may eject when knocked down. So the mech might not actually be damaged overall, it might just be shaken and the pilot collapses, and the pilot now has a random chance to punch out as a result of that. Um, yeah, that's not ideal. Nothing else on this. Cerberus, I'm hoping for one here that's actually got the... No. You normally get different affinities and you get uh, extra ones underneath, but it looks like we got some pretty boring pilots here. So cor cautious, naturally inclined to not expose, uh, not, uh, not expire. Plus one defense, negative one accuracy. So less accurate pilot, higher defensive pilot. Mm -hmm. Could be worse. Ex-military, they've seen some things. Bonus one health. That's good. Spacer reduces the Argo's upkeep by one percent. Not a bad pilot. This is one that I'll definitely set up. I'll be going for something like uh, a, a bulwark build. Won't worry about the um, won't worry about the shooting ability so much, but uh, with the plus one bonus health on top of everything else I get and the plus one defense, pump the defense bonuses up and turn them into a tank. And yeah, it's like that with all of your pilots. They'll have little bonuses and little negatives on them, and it, there's a little bit more to the pilots now as well. So it's not just uh, just the base four stats that we've been playing with. There's a few extra sub things that are worth considering that can have an overall effect, which is again really, really, really bloody cool. All right. So, anyways, we need a new mission because we are done there, and we do need to rotate our pilot out because we have already done one. Uh, last mech standing, straight battle, it's one and a half skull, we do not have the tonnage for that, unfortunately. Hostile acquisitions, assault convoy, new, 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 this is actually not looking good. Troubles with Davians, I don't want to piss the Davians off, but that is an assassinate mission. Through random attack bandits, for instance, we might be able to make some headway. I'd rather not attack Davian forces if I can. I want to try and build up with them. They're Davian as well. Here in the Lindsay system, Davian... Ah, Draconis Combine is a pain in my ass. Alright, as much as I don't like, uh, don't like the Turians, they're the only ones offering a pirate contract. Pirate Convoy regularly transports rare mater materials through the region. Our agents have acquired the convoy's travel plans so that we can ambush the convoy. We do not require that you recover the minerals. Just We just want to keep them out of the enemy's hands. Right, so we have to be fast with this. Because the ground units can actually fair haul if we do this. It's entirely... Oh, it depends on the strength of their defences. It's only a half skull, so this shouldn't be too bad. Um, 
can go 314 and not take money on this one. Why are they paying so high in parts? You know what? Let's 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 go three fourteen. Let's go for a full salvage mission on this one. I don't know what we'll find, but regardless, I'd like to scoop everything up because you start with next to no spare parts for your mechs, and we need. It doesn't really matter what's dropped. I need it. I need spare guns. I need spare components. I need spare ammunition. I need everything. So let's uh, let's piss off the pirates. And steal all their stuff. Alright, so we'll leave the fire, fire starter up front. The Falcon's our other heavy mech. Medium, small, MG's too small. Yeah, it's not great. That's all we've really got. Um, this is going for a convoy, so the urban mech is going to be too slow. So it looks like we'll be taking the Wasp and we'll be taking the Locust. Um, now, our combination, Claymore's going to be out. Our main pilot needs to have a sleep. Uh... Cerberus. Oh. Grandmaster can drive the Locust, because I already don't like him. Hulk can drive the Wasp. Drill bit in the Falcon, and Cerberus can take the Fire Starter. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Now, Atlas perk, upon coming into full view, light mech pilots pee themselves a little. I, I think that's a given. I don't think that has to be a quirk. <laughs> that's just... F physics demands that. Physics and biology demands that one. D to be fair, anybody in anything less than about 65 tons pees themselves a little when an Atlas comes in, if it's not on their side. You're fighting for the Turians, blimey. Well, the only alternative I've got is to kill the Davians, and I don't want to kill the Davians. I actually want to kill the Draconis Combine. <laughs> but uh, I'm not being given the option. The only missions there, the, the, the one and a half skulls, will straight up fuck my entire lance. And if I lose an entire lance this early on, without the finances to replace them and without the parts to repair them, it is a wipe. It's entirely possible to wipe on this now. Uh, the, the difficulty level does no longer fuck around and you no longer have the easy out remember all my mechs can be destroyed to the point of unrecoverability now I don't just get them back and have to fix them I have to drag them off the battlefield to salvage if I lose any that's assuming there's something to salvage and I can't just do an Arano mission and immediately get 5 million credits in the bank so yeah, I don't like it either, but that's where I've started. I think after this mission we're going to be moving north and uh, trying to find some more interesting places to go. We're pretty close to the, uh, the Liao border. We can go kill them. That'd work. All right, so to intercept the convoy, we'll need to identify their routes. Let's move up and get your eyes on the targets. When contact is made, we'll hit them before they reach their destination. When we extract to our designated evac zone, I hate, I hate these kinds of missions. It looks like we've already got a mech that's on defense over there at the moment. I can't tell exactly what it is. Copy. You betcha. Confirmed. I read you, Commander. Moving out. Alright, stop the convoy from escaping. So that's where they are going to. That looks like it's going to be our intercept point. So the convoy must be up here somewhere initially. I imagine those mechs are running along with them. So what we're going to have to do... There. Okay. As funny as it might sound, we probably haven't got enough firepower to actually straight up wipe Coordinate these received. mechs out, or these um, vehicles out, in one turn on a single mech on, on shooting. We, we probably don't have enough guns. So we're going to have to stand on them. We got a pack rat. So we'll open up and fire with some of our mechs, but we need one to rush in and actually stand on them. Hey, 
Okay. All right, we are not going to be able to get that close this turn. If you say so. Oh, and that accuracy. Should have known I'd miss. Well, that is a stinger. That is one of the new mechs. I think that was a stinger. Right, so what have we got here? Yeah, Stinger, STG-3R. Pretty sure that's like a 20 ton scout Waiting mech. for orders. Alright, drill bit. How close? Ooh, actually that works better. We cannot jump close enough. But I can jump... What about there? Would be close to weapons optimal. Uh, 480 armor on the Falcon. No I guess we're going to see whether or not it can tank. At least a little. Primary target is taking damage. Yeah, that did fuck all that thing's armor. And a wasp. Right, so nothing surprising there. We've got one of those. I'm not sure what the variant would be. It's a 1D, is that the same as ours? 1D, yep, we've got the same variant, okay. Yeah. Confirmed. I think I was a little bit too far back with the Falcon. Alright, so small lasers and flamers. Firing everything. Yeah, we're gonna have to stand ya. on them in the next turn. Now the Locust, we don't actually need to get that close. Actually, we can stay about there. LRMs. Take this. Actually, funnily enough, LRMs might be our saving grace here. They did decent damage. God, look at how fast they move. We essentially have three turns to wipe out all four of these vehicles, otherwise they'll hit the, the deployment zone and they'll exit. That's a goblin. Large laser equipped goblin. I thought these were just transports. It looked like they're all armed. Vendetta. That is an auto cannon. I'm here. Alright. Yeah, here we go. Oh, for fuck's sake, miss with Primary both. At least the flame, at least that hit. Enemy Jesus. vehicle destroyed. Oh, it's painful playing with mech pilots that have such low chance to hit at the moment. Nothing, you hear me? I hear ya. I suppose the upside of these all being, um, yeah, we have to focus on the vehicles first. The upside of these all being armed is it means I the leave. vehicles here are actually going to have weapons to drop. Got it. Jesus, that aim. That aim. Did you see that? I would hate to have been that mountain. It's about the only thing that was put at risk then. I'm listening. Right, Here get goes. Wasp into position. That was better. Not enough to get through the armor, what but... What can I do for you? Uh-huh. Uh, actually, bad rating on the LRMs. A scorpion tank. 
I think the scorpion weighs more than some of the mechs that I've got deployed at the moment. All weapons are go! How far is it going to be able to move? Actually, that's not so bad. That's not so bad. We might be able to get in there and stand on it, and hopefully we get the crush bonus. I don't know if they've messed with that or not. If they've messed with the ability for mechs to just stand and insta-crush vehicles, um, that could be a problem. <laughs> Marvel's aim has dropped right off. Yeah, we have to build a new Marvel. Thankfully, we don't have to worry about a Decker dying this time. Waiting on you, Commander. What now? Uh, we can not DFA the vehicles, unfortunately. Uh, I can get just close enough. Get all weapons into the other side. Okay, firing everything. Hey, we're getting outflanked. Yeah, no shit. It's because you're taking too long to kill the vehicles because none of you can aim. We've got to take out the vehicles you? before they get to the dropship. You better be able to, to stand on them twice. or we're in trouble. Going toe to toe. Oh, thank Christ, that works. Yeah, shoot the wreck. That's cool. I don't mind. Bye-bye! Alright, I was worried they might have changed that, but it looks like that is our best option. Stand on them. Okay, you could nice cut right it off now. Little wasp and then flamethrower to the face. Damage looks light, Commander. Right here. Right, Hulk. Mm -hmm. Cannot get close. I can. I can. Oh. I don't know if this is a good idea. No, I don't think this is going to be a good idea. Let's not do that. I'm taking the highway. Let's see if we can get through the goblin from this side. Come on. Here goes everything. <sighs> Tank. What can I do for you? Yeah, come on. Firing everything I've got. That was terrible. At least their aim is as bad as mine. Good to go. Hey. Um. Actually, first, can Waiting Grand on you, Master. Commander. Grand Master can actually make it. I don't know if the Locust is going to be able to crush this thing. Hopefully, it you can. Betcha. If it can, we can clear this. No, nah, you're not heavy enough. Oh, that was a waste of a turn. Alright, engine shielding crit on the this Falcon. Is serious. Yeah, now we're getting our shit pushed in. Here. Crush Moving the goblin. Position. Come on, please. Yeah. Please. That's okay. That's okay. Frag the vehicle. It's next turn they're going to make the drop zone. I'm not sure why this wasp is so insistent on just punching us in the back over and over again. I'm okay. 
for now. Waiting for uh, orders. Drill bit's gonna jump wide. Actually, no, jump to about there. Affirmative. Taking crippling damage to the back, all its back armor is gone. And apparently cannot hit. You should be able to shoot past the locust from there. Really? Well, that's crap. Commander. On my way. All right, why? Seriously, is that little rock blocking line of sight? All right, clearly they have fucked with the line of sight rules in this now. And I don't know them. So I just wasted two mechs turns in a high priority mission. I might have one more turn. I might be able to recover this yet. If one of those vehicles hits the drop zone, and I don't kill it that turn, it ends the mission. We we fail. What now? Right. Cerberus, jump. Okay. Copy that. Firing Alpha Drake. Commander? This is why I hate convoy ambush missions. Pretty sure I mentioned that several times during the last playthrough. I hate, hate convoy ambush missions. Make it. Yeah, we have. We have to destroy it this turn. No, we failed the mission. That's it, we failed. Haven't topped the uh, material shipment commander. I'll notify the Taurian Concordant rep. Mission, mission failed. failed. One of them made it. I failed. Fucking hate these missions. Jeez, that was bullshit. Yep, that's this is why I don't take them. This this isn't a mod thing. They're like that in vanilla BattleTech as well. Those the vehicles we were fighting there, they were like thirty-five ton, forty ton tanks. They've got more armor than our mechs that we're engaging them with, and they're faster. And we can't stop them. Yeah. Um, as for stomping them, I, I would have. The only mech there that was heavy enough to actually do it was the fire starter, and I couldn't get close enough with it. Even on the jump, I couldn't get close enough to actually hit it. I could only hit the side. So, uh, yeah, instant failed. Negative 36. That cost us money, and we've got to now repair all the mechs. Yeah, 75% not enough. At least we got some salvage, but we only got two items aside rather than what we were actually supposed to get. So we got a large laser and an MG. And it's going to cost us money to have done that. 
Yeah, I hate them and always try and avoid those missions by the plague. Yeah, yeah. as a general rule, I do too, but it's literally the only other mission that on here that doesn't have me fighting Davian forces, which I don't want to do. Um, but yeah, there's a mission failure. And now all of my pilots are fatigued, and we're going to have to blow money that I don't really have because we didn't get what we needed to actually fix our mechs. I suppose it gives us at least an opportunity to do a refit, so... We didn't lose any components. Thankfully, it's not going to be that expensive. Okay, so this actually doesn't need to be messed around with too much. This actually isn't a bad build. It's only got 10 armor on the back. This is why it was so easy to get through its rear armor. 15 to the center, 10 on the back. But we're looking at 74. We could have more armor in the center. We could have up to 85. We got 60 at the front. So providing we keep the Falcon pointing towards the enemy, this thing will actually, for the size of mechs we're playing with at the moment, this thing will actually take a fair old slap in the face. Um, really don't like the fact that the MG ammo is in the center torso. That is all sorts of dumb. Um, not much we can do configuration-wise, though. It's only got four... Four small weapon hard points and one hard point for an energy weapon in the arm. So there's not actually much in the way of upgrade options for this one. That's it. Like, it's basically got its weapons loadout maxed out by default. So. Alright, it's an ugly mech. But it's not necessarily a terrible one for this early stage. This is definitely my tank mech. But, um. Hmm, lacking a little on firepower. Oh, well. Right. I'll get it. At least it was relatively cheap, and everything else didn't really take much in the way of damage. Alright, so we are going to go. First things first, contracts. Ah, in this one too, contracts will expire and disappear depending on how long you take. So as you're playing, uh, yeah, things will rotate. It's got a 210 maximum. Yeah, I don't, no, I don't want to fight Davian forces. We need to build the rep up with at least one faction to begin with, just so we can get decent payouts. Yeah, let's... Star map. Let's get the hell away from the periphery and go find a spot. So this Capellan space. Medham. Jump distance. In system, it's seven days. It'll take 20 days to get their total. In system, travel time is seven days. Though initially settled by the Turians, Medem was seized by the Capellans in a brutal war of aggression which saw civilian massacres. The world was later conquered by Davian and is now a thriving industrial sector, though its orbit is choked with battle debris. Battlefield, medium gravity planet, moderate population, periphery level civilization, ruins, and a Terran world. Hmm. 19 days to get to Horsham. Turian world, Horsham boasted several Turian defense force naval yards during the, you know, the reunification war. Horsham was overrun by the SLDF, pacified and taken by the Federated Sons. The total destruction of the naval yards was a crippling blow to the world's economy. So it's another battlefield world. This is the right direction though. 20 days. Just looking at our travel times here. Actually, do a quick filter. We're mainly looking for half skulls. Just on our tonnage at the moment, we don't have. We can't really do much higher. Yeah, these are pretty harsh worlds. System owner abandoned. 15 days. Many was settled during the Star League era at some point after the end of the reunification wars, but died out during the fighting in the succession wars. Turian Concordant. I don't really want Turian Worlds, and I want to be heading north. 17 days to Hishi. Hishi was settled during the Star League era at some point after the end. Yeah, okay, so yeah, same same flavor text. It's sad that I've already found a repeat. Uh, low gravity planet, pirate presence. So we get battle versus pirates. It's alright, I don't care if I piss pirates off. Uh, primitive civilization, token population, uninhabited world, and a water world. Okay. Oh, yeah, no, we can go with that. Let's go to Hishi. 17 days, cost us 60,000. course now, Commander. Calculating escape velocity. 
I thought the game par supported partial successes. That's pretty crap. Depends on the mission. The mission will sometimes allow you that. Um, but in those missions, no. You've got to wipe out the, the... The objective is to wipe out the entire convoy. If one unit makes it through, eh, you're out. Bad luck. All right, so new mechs and weapons available. Hey, Commander, the talk on Merknet is that some hot new mechs and weapon systems fell off a cargo ship and are available for folks with the right connections. Well, I've got a connection. So, give the word and we get a free crate of random new goodies will magically appear in the cargo hold and we could travel straight and narrow, buying them in stores and salvaging them from the battlefield like normal. What do you say? I'm going to leave this one up to chat. So, basically what this is, it's part of the Heavy Metal expansion. Um, this is part of the vanilla game. Essentially, this is a random loot crate that can carry... It can potentially have a mech up to 45 tons in it potentially could be less could be more could be none um and it'll have a random selection of weapons in it one weapon is potentially rare so it's a just a, it's a box of free shit that is completely randomized and we can choose to take it or not so the devil says to take it anybody else take the damn crate all right let's take the crate Let's take the crate. Okay. All right. No thanks. Take the crate. Let's see what we get. All right. So we got a 40-ton assassin, which is probably straight up a better mech than anything else that we've got at the moment. We got a single snub PPC. We got an XLDF LBX-10. Oh, hello. And ammo for it. Oh, okay, we got a... The mech is ready to fight, Commander. All right, so the, the mech is useful, but not going to be for long. Assassins are not... They're not super great mechs. Although they're not bad-looking mechs. But it's probably better than anything I've got here. But uh, hang on a second. Uh, components... SLDF, Star League Defense Boards, Force LBX-10. So we've got a, uh, a Star League shotgun. 11 tons, four slots, worth 230,000. It's probably worth some more than some of our mechs. Uh, the LBX-10 uh, stands away considerable amounts of armor. And da -da 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 -da. We know what they do. It's a cluster munition. It's a, it's a mech shotgun. Damage 10 times 8 with 5 times 8 stability damage for 10 heat range long. Optimal 300 meters, max 450. Better than the rest of your hangar. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair it is. Um, yeah, again, to give you an idea on exactly how stingy it is with parts at the start of this, as you can see, this is, uh, that's, that's, that's everything that I've got in my hangar at the moment in terms of weapons. The large laser I just salvaged, and these two I got out of loot crate. So the only thing, only weapon I had as a spare to refit a mech prior to the uh, prior to this was that MG. So it's it's pretty stingy on parts initially. Actually, I should probably check that a little bit more. We got the assassin. Medium laser, LRM-5, SRM-2. What are the bonuses on this one? Because it'll have them now. Okay, the Assassin lives up to its name, at least against lighter units. It has an astounding jump ca capability in addition to its ground speed and flexible weapons package. It has poor armor for its tonnage. However, it's the best at hit and run attacks. Uh, so yeah, that's all the same. All the same bonuses down to it. Uh, green level bonus. Extra large engine. The extra large engine for the weight class provides plus one hit defense and plus one initiative. Mech quirks. Easy to maintain. 25% faster repair speed. Negative. Uh, negative quirks. Cramped cockpit. Negative one loss to actions that generate resolve. Non-standard parts, 25% repair cost increased. Increase. So it's more expensive to repair, but you can be repaired faster. Poor life support. Pilot takes an injury when the mech overheats. 
Oh, that's a negative. If I cook it, if I cook it and push the heat, um, pilots will take straight injuries every time I pass the overheat threshold. Yeah. I step away for a moment and you have an assassin. Relax, the assassin come out of a box. <laughs> That, that's the heavy metal bonus. But it's, uh, yeah. That last one's a bad one. If we overheat it, or if somebody else overheats the mech for us with flamers, it instantly does damage to injuries to the pilot. But, uh, that's okay. And loadout-wise, it's not great. Um, we don't have anything to refit it with at the moment. I'm just taking a, poke, a pick. So we've got the intercept system. Ignores three evasion. The assassin's unique intercept system makes mech an unparalleled hunter killer against lighter units. Its highly specialized predictive trajectory tracking allows to ignore three evasive charges on its targets. Okay, I take it back. Uh, that alone is really, really, really nice, considering that's exactly the kind of mechs we're going to be fighting at the moment. I think what I need to do when we get enough cash is I need to yank the LRM out of this. Well, first, we need to do that. Uh, I need to yank the LRM out of this, and I need to try and get an SRM-4 or an SRM-6 in. What else have we got in the way of hard points here? Bugger all. Yeah, either, either an SRM-4 or an SRM-6. And we need to probably play with the jump jets a little bit. Having all those jump jets is really nice. But if we can free up just a smidgen of tonnage so we can pump up the armor. Because this will actually take a decent amount. We can have maximum of 90 forward with 10 rear. And a maximum of 100 forward with 20 rear. So we can actually pump the armor on this a little bit. It's not going to be super tough, but enough to deal with light mechs. On it. I'll that, let you know when that's done. Yeah, we can, we can do we can work with that. We can work with that. It is good looking mech though. All right, so we better continue our transport because we are going to have to find. We at we got to be due our payments soon enough. My favorite build for it is SRMs only. Yeah, I could see that working. I'm not a super SRM only kind of build. I don't like having mech builds where I'm completely 100% ammunition reliant. Uh, I make sole exceptions on long range fire support mechs like the uh, the catapult and the stalker and stuff like that. But that's only because I put like a thousand missiles in them. You know, when you've got 10 tons of ammunition I'm less concerned but when you're only playing with one or two tons of ammunition total because you're only got a light mech and it hasn't got a lot of space I'm not super fond about taking away a secondary weapon particularly an energy weapon something that is not ammunition dependent but yeah I could I could absolutely see a pure SRM build if you could fit two SRM sixes on that That'd be a nasty, nasty little light mech hunter. Alright, so this is uh, one of the new features of the mod as well. Comstar News Bureau. What happens is, uh, about once a month, sometimes a couple of times a month, but about at least once a month, you're going to get a news report from Comstar that tells you what's happening at the galaxy at any given time. So... Kelhound's leader returns from exile. Morgan Kel, one of the two brothers who headed the Kelhound's mercenary union, has returned from a self-imposed exile at St. Marian's house in Zenaya. He was seen at the New Year's Ball held by Archon Katrina Steiner on Tharkad, dressed in a Kelhound's uniform. So this goes through events in law that happen on particular dates. So it is currently uh, the 10th of January, 3028. Reports indicate that he returned from exile in the wake of his brother's death in May last year and has taken up command of the Calhouns once more. This has been a CBN January broadcast. No lasting consequences. So, no major effects have happened, but this is the uh, just the current news for what's going on. So the Calhouns are back on the table.
right, so financial report in 19 days. That's going to be about a hundred and something thousand, so we're going to dip below a million. And we haven't started upgrades on the Argo yet. Really need to start getting some upgrades on the Argo if we're going to have the bonuses that we're going to need from them as well. So that's still part of the gameplay. That hasn't changed. All right, let's have a look at the store. What have we got? Not much. Yep, not much. Um, okay. Oh, one other thing. Uh, up here on the top left-hand corner, score 1,183 days remaining and goes to a blank. Uh, days, uh, days remaining, 1,183 current score points earned. This... Basically, the game gives you 1,200 days when you start a new career like this to calculate a score. It doesn't actually stop you from playing, um, which gives you, I think it's 3.2 years that works out at, or somewhere around there. Um, three, three and a bit years to play through, and then you get a score on how well you've performed. You can keep playing after that, which is exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to be playing through the entirety of the Fourth Succession War and playing all the way up to the clan invasion and the defeat of the clans. So we're going to be at this a while. Um, the idea is to give you an end point where you can't earn anymore. So if you happen to have, you know, multiple uh, Steiner Scout Lancers sitting in the hangar, you know, you, you go off and do other things or you start a new one. Anyways, all of our pilots are good. Everything's all set up and organized. I don't have any weapons, so I can't upgrade anything here. What missions have we got? Please tell me we've got some missions here. Turians are still running missions this far in. You know what? That's actually an option. That one. The Turians want to kill Capellans on a Davian world. And Davians are the only ones that I'm looking at actually building up, uh... Building up, um... Buddy... Reputation with. So, that's alright. Capellan forces have been scouting territory near Davian controlled land. It's a battle, lowlands. That's a good one. That's a popular, uh, popular one. Blackout. Last week, radio comms and strategic outpost was interrupted mid data stream to one of the remote relays, and we've been unable to establish contact. Our other units are all tied up, so we need you to go and for, do a sit rep. Okay. That pays pretty well, too. That's half a million in that. 210 max salvage. What are the pirates offering? I don't really care for them too much. They're going against Davian, so fuck them. I'm not doing that. Uh, don't really care much for Capellans. Uh, but, okay, that's that's actually a possibility as well, because the Capellans apparently want to kill Turians here. Okay. No, they want to kill Davians on that one. Alright, so that one's out. And one and a half skull is probably going to get our asses kicked and it's against Davians anyway. Right, let's do the battle. Low gravity, moderate gale. So that's our weather report. For weeks now, Capellan forces have been scouting our territory near D Davian controlled land. Now, we can go 210. We're dying for parts here. I can afford... I can afford to run... A couple of missions going for full salvage, and then I'm going to have to get some money. At the moment, we don't have enough to sell, but I also don't have enough parts to actually be able to build anything. So we need we need bits. So that will be our go. Yes, we got. Will that make a difference? Two eight on sixty four. Now let's go for the whole hog. We'll go for the whole hog. All right. So we're going to rejig these a little bit. We are definitely going to put the assassin in, and I want Claymore in the driver's seat of the assassin. Uh, we want the fire starter on two. We'll keep the falcon in and the wasp. The locust can go out. Cerberus can stay in. Uh, two. Four. 
four three three two on piloting. Probably drill bit over Grandmaster, because Grandmaster I want to get rid of. Although I want to get rid of Hulk as well, so we want to do some pilot rotations. Yeah, so drill bit I'll actually be spending time on. Yeah, that works. That works. Okay, we'll go with that. Uh, the Assassin 21 has four missile pods. It's fun to use them. Yeah, that okay. That that would be a good build. Yeah, I said I'm still not super fond about not having a secondary weapon, but I can see how that would work. Um, if you're willing to sacrifice some armor, quad SRM fours on an assassin. You know, 16 SRM Alpha Strike with bonuses against light units. Command interface initiated. My right, commander, you arrived in the region where the enemy was last detected. Move forward and clear them out. Shouldn't let any of them get away if we can help it. Let's get this over with so we can go swimming. Okay, that was a odd pilot call out there. Right, so enemy units should be this way. I think we should just move up to the tree line for a start. Coordinates received. At the very least, everything I have has jump jets, so we have extra mobility as needed. Right. We don't have any scouting points at the moment, so we don't actually know what tonnage these are. Though we know they're, they're likely lights. They're likely lights. Um, I might actually... Come on, anybody else want to reveal yourselves? I really want you to come to me. G'day, Matt End. How's it going, mate? Alright, so, third mech coming down. Not unexpected. I'm going to reserve everybody once again. Alright, here we go. And we have a... Warning. Enemy sensor lock oh. detected. Oh, I don't think I've got the skill to be able to recover that one at the moment, but frig, I'd like to. Taking a pounding, Commander! And a fire starter. Alright, this is actually a nasty little combination. Alright. Time to stop. Uh, time will. We weren't really messing around to begin with, but. That Raven. I'm gonna stay in bonus range at the moment with the Assassin. Really not great numbers overall, anywhere. Right, we'll take a shot at it anyway. What? No. That was kind of sad. I want to keep it in the tree line, so I take the bonuses for at least this first part of the engagement. Right. I want them to get closer. Until I can move straight in and begin flanking. Right here. Mm-hmm. Confirmed. Which means my first shots here are going to be kind of terrible because everything's kind of out of range Locking and all of my target. pilots are kind of crap in this regard. Huh. Missed. Although hopefully they'll have enough points Good after this mission to actually pump up their um, pump up the gunnery way. skills. And another miss. Yeah, that's to be expected. That would be a miss. Reserve for one turn. Come on, guys. I want you to move your mechs in. 
retreating back. Come on, fire starter. Come on. Come in. No, it's pulling back as well. Little bastards. They're going to make us chase them. Well, if that's the way, if that's the way it's going to be. Engaging jump jets. All weapons committed. God, that aim no is terrible. Detected. My God, and this is with the uh, okay. the bonuses. We should go. Fifty one thirty eight. Yeah, that's actually the better one. We should have been going for the Raven. Yeah, let's go for the Raven. You say so. Right, we got the Raven on fire. Let's yeah. just start. Here it goes. Hulking in the Falcon. Locking on and firing it all. Waiting for orders. A drill bot. Affirmative. Got it. No, Raven doesn't have great heat management, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's a, not really what it's all about, but... Uh, Uh, if we can get the pilot to eject... All weapons committed. Although the pilots don't seem to be shaking all that much. Warning. Detecting mech warrior injury. Now the devil risen. Cheers lads. Raise a glass to celebrate my year working at a telco and not going insane. Yeah, I'd, I'd raise a glass to that. Wrong night for it, mate. I was drinking last night, but uh, I'll raise a glass. I couldn't work in a telco. I, hear. I, I, I would lose my shit. I, I admit that freely. You're a tougher man than I when it comes to that kind of stuff. Come on, cook him. Upper arm actuated destroyed, SRM-6 crit Everything's on fire, 12 up. heat, SRM-6 destroyed, nice. Fortunately, they're going to start doing that to my mechs using their fire starter. Damage, minor. Madan, your mechs lost a couple of pounds, you lost a pet. No, I completed the campaign. It's, it's all done and finished now. We, uh, we, we rolled in. We smeared Victoria all over, well, all over mm -hmm, the inside I'm of the going. cockpit of a new shiny king crab, and we uh, we wandered off into the sunset like the heroes we were. So this is the uh, BattleTech Extended mod, and we're starting an entirely new campaign. We're in Davy in space. That was a critical My hit. That pilot's was... starting to get stressed now, which is good, but not enough for him to punch out. Commander. Um, so yeah, completely new campaign, just started today, completely new set of battle mechs, which are all incredibly light, as you can see. And we're playing with some pretty serious difficulty levels turned up. That's it. I may need some more time in the simulator. You did, no shit. Damn, I missed that. Um, yeah, the the last two... Uh, actually, I'm probably going to release the last... Oh, claim was taking a head injury? Shit, I didn't see that. Um, let's pull the assassin back a little bit. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to pump the armor on that if he's taken injuries already. All weapons committed. Hang on. Yeah, there we go. Ejection pod. He panicked. The Raven pilot took a slice to the head and panicked, and he just punched out of the mech. 
Since we didn't destroy that, it's entirely possible we're going to drag two parts of a raven off the battlefield. What? No. Yep, that's another part of the mod. If you can break their morale and just focusing on them like that was enough to get him to freak out. And yeah, he just, yeah, he noped the fuck out of this fight. If you say so. Alright, let's see if we can break a few more of them. Let's get this wasp next. Hope this is enough. Um, as I was saying, the uh, the second last stream for the end of the Battletech campaign went up yesterday or today. I'm losing track of time. Um, the Commander. the next one I'm probably going to release later later tonight, which is actually it's just the last two missions is all that stream was. We went in and uh, completed it, because the last two missions are linked. Once you start the second last mission, you have to finish the campaign. You can't do missions in between, so... Heading out, mm-hmm. Alright. Firing at him. You're terrible with those machine guns, at least the mediums hit. I'm guessing you didn't like that, did ya? Pilot stressed. Waiting for orders. Let's get into the rear arc as Moving well with our position. wasp. Looks like 33% on destroyed enemy units. They've only got three max. Firing everything I've got. Systems recycling for another shot. And you're a terrible shot, Jesus. Alright, let's get the assassin around. I'm just going to shoot the wasp straight in the front. All weapons committed. Engine Enemy shielding crit. Damage. And there we go. Detected. The wasp pilot just punched out in a panic. So we got two of them to freak out. You can see daylight through my armor. I don't like how this is going. How much time can you sink in the campaign when doing every mission? Standing um, by. In this, in the single player main story campaign, just in the missions, there's probably if you were to just play the story missions and do nothing else, there's probably fifteen hours, maybe twenty, in just story missions alone. No, I mean, actually, no, fifteen's probably about right, but you'll you'll struggle to complete the game just doing the story missions. Once you do the missions in between and add to it, um, a, a good campaign campaign playthrough to a completion, it can essentially run for as long as you want it to run for, but, you know, the time frame you'd probably want to look at it. 25 to 30 hours, comfortably, on a single run of the story mission. And then you have the, uh, the, the extra, just mercenary campaigns, which don't have the story element, which you can run as many times as you want. They can easily run, you know, 50, 60, 70 hours, depending on how you want to run them for. This this one here we're starting today is most likely going to be one of those because with this mod, we're starting in 3028 and we're going to be playing to 3061 through some pretty major events of the Inner Sphere. So uh, we're going to be here a while. Roger that. Uh, all of them are having difficulty to hit a barn from the inside. Yeah, it's because everybody here, including the enemy mechs, frankly, have... We're all in light mechs, so all of these mechs have bonuses to their maneuverability and their and their the def defensive bonuses to hit, because we're all in small mechs. And because we're only on half-scale missions, all of our pilots are shit pilots in terms of aim, and so are all of theirs. So everybody's missing everything. I mean, look at these hit percentages. They're terrible, but that's that's just where we're at at the moment. We need better pilots, and the only way to get better pilots is we got to get them to kill things. If I could drop one of my uh, my quad ten pilots from the last campaign in here, he would wander around and one shot virtually everything, even in a light. Yeah. Uh, we actually gonna jump and turn just so I can actually get the guns around on the Falcon. 
go. Commander? Now this is their heaviest mech, obviously, too. Right, Commander. The wasp in there. If there was ever a time for a shitty flute to cover the soundtrack, yeah. That's a critical hit. It's, it's, it is important to remember, when you play the standard story campaign, you actually start with pilots that are already up around the four skill points on everything. So, two points higher in almost every category than all of these pilots. Doomed. And Doomed. you're already... You usually start with a blackjack, a shadow hawk, a commando, and a... Oh, what's the other one? A Victor. So your lightest mech is the Commando, which is 25 tons, which is 5 tons heavier than two of the mechs that we've got in here that we're running. The Victor's 40... Uh, not Victor. Um, not Victor. Uh, Vindicator. Uh, that's 40 tons. The Shadowhawk's 55, and I think it's 45 tons for a Blackjack, off the top of my head. So... That's the, the lance you start the standard campaign with. That's the lance I'm trying to find the parts to build at the moment. That's my first upgrade. So you're starting in a much worse place. And you're starting in a much higher difficulty level as well. Engaging jump jets. Which is a combination of both the settings we selected and the specifics of this particular mod. Oh, playing on Simulation Plus. Hey, big gorilla. Good day from the Great White North. Ah, oh, good day from the, uh... What time is it? 1.51, the, uh, the late night in the, uh, the actually kind of cooling off south, although it's been muggy as hell today. Right here. It's, uh, it is cooling off. We are losing our summer here at the moment, but, uh, and, and stepping into autumn, the leaves are falling off the trees that, uh, that actually do drop our, uh, do drop leaves. Not all Roger of them here that. do. But uh, it's not cooling off as much as I would expect. Copy. Come on. Damn, he missed with all the I'm flamers. Listening. Come on, punch through his armor and hit something. Anything. Here goes. Holy shit, somebody worked out how to aim. A critical hit. Mm. Good to go. Affirmative. Right, we won't jump on this one. We'll run the wasp because it's. Oh, actually, we're not going to be able to fire all the weapons either. All right, we don't fire the medium laser. We just fire the small lasers and the flamer, and miss with the flamer, of course. <laughs> and yep, he's going to get around and try and get into our six. Ah going to melee now. Warning. Armor low. And we've just about yeah, we've ran to the edge of the map, so he's put himself against the map border so we can't keep jumping behind him. Smart boy. There we go. Got into panic and he punched out too. The SRM's landed. All right, so all three pilots bailed out of their mechs. Mission successful. Uh, inebriated hunting. This is not going well. Already losing my aim. I, I, you're making me want to install Hunter on and actually have a shot at that. Is there a multiplayer component in that? Like, like can I team up with somebody co-op and go hunting together? I... The last hunt, the last, I've had the Hunter Call of the Wild, in, I think it's Call of the Wild, in my collection for ages. I just haven't really played it. The last one I did play was the, um, the Hunter one that was, uh, Hunt the Dinosaurs, which they ended up abandoning. Alright, so it looks like everybody shared shots at all of the mechs, because we did. That's the, uh, what the red mech icons are here. You actually get a bit of an award for, uh, everybody taking a swing at each mech. It wasn't an individual kill, it was a team kill. 
And no lost components, but we've got a little bit of battle damage we've got to put back together. And we have parts. Now, because the pilots bailed out on at least two of the mechs, looks like the uh, wasp was too damaged. We only got one part there. But we have two parts for Firestarter and two parts for the Raven. Now, I'm taking the Raven bits. I'm just, I'm taking the Raven bits. Um, now, medium lasers, flamers, SRM2s. Hopefully we'll get some decent salvage out of this. Now we need four parts now to complete a mech too. That's worth remembering. Alright, so we got one part of the wasp. We got two flamers. No, we got four flamers. Four flamers and we recovered the SRM too. Alright. That's not too bad. We got a few spare bits we can actually use to start upgrading stuff. Yep. Alright, I might have to find the time to... uh. Time to install that one. You, you're making me curious about going hunting. Can't wait for some neat ruse in the snow. Yeah, this, no, no snow here. No, no snow here. Alright, so... Three... I claim more. All right, so my pilot's out of action because he took an injury in there, which I didn't see. 32 days, unfortunately. That's not great. I'm here. Cerberus only has 24 XP. 500. I need 900, really, to push points for it anymore. Drill bit only at 24. I hear you. 40. I copy. It's really low. On you, Commander. R what can I do for you? Commander? What? No. Yeah, it's going to take a while. Um, alright. What are we going to do? We are going to have to get some ship upgrades going then. We need the training, really need the training modules up. So we need the repaired power conduits for a start. Alright, so 89,100, we'll get the uh, power get the condu conduits under, re under repair, that's not so bad. Now, we have to wait a little while at the moment. We have to wait at least seven days for our pilots to rotate through for some rest. Nothing we can do about Claymore. Taking a head injury at this point, 32 days out of commission, and he's my best pilot and my personal pilot for uh, this particular uh, campaign. Alright, so now the flashpoints have started activating. So, Inosphere politics impact everything they touch, even down here in the periphery. Flashpoints between the great houses are developing all over the map. And our faction reps are paying good money to resol resolve them. Alright, so for those who have never played or never seen Battletech played outside of the story mode, what we just had then is the activation message for the flashpoints. So what these are... I'll see if we can find a filter for one. I'm not sure what filter combination we'll actually after. Battlefield, Star League, okay. And none of them actually seem to be on map anywhere at the moment. Uh, okay, essentially what they are is they're mini campaigns, series of missions that are tied to... Oh, wait, there's one down here. Alright, so, Flashpoint Campaign. It's a two-skull campaign of unknown origin. Engagement length, medium. Consecutive deployments, no. Bonus reward. Rare item, tonnage requirements, heavy. Commander, we have an important task for you to res uh, rescue operation at the utmost edge of the Rimworld frontier. Meet me at Terragona and we'll fill you in the details. Uh, mech tonnage minimum. One or more contracts in this flashpoint limits at least one of the deployment slots in your lance to a minimum tonnage. Expect to drop one or more heavier, slightly armored, highly armored mechs. Alright, so... These are your flashpoint campaigns. It's a chain of missions, one after the other. Sometimes you'll get deployments that happen close enough together you don't have time to repair. You're just immediately into the next mission. Sometimes you'll have a break. 
depends on the flashpoint setup and you will they, they essentially have special bonuses to them but you have to play through x number of missions and complete them successfully so they're mini campaigns and they can range from just two missions to some of them getting five six seven eight missions in a row that you've got to complete Uh, God, that's low XP from the base game. It's going to take months to get a slot. Yeah, well, I have got them on slow, or believe it or not, that is not the slowest setting. This is the default setting for the mod in terms of XP. It gets lower. You can have a lower option, but I didn't take that one. But we can work with that. We can work with this. Uh, we just got to get the right combination of missions and uh, get some good XP out of it. Also, getting some good critical hits and bonuses will actually pump that up a bit too, so... The, the bit that hurt the most out of that wasn't the XP, it was the, the injury. That was not good. Alright, so that's all of our pilots are now back in order, except Claymore, of course. Um, it's also why when I was looking at the uh, the engineering and the ship upgrades, the very first thing I wanted to look at was the training module because it still functions at about the same way as it did in vanilla. So just leaving your pilots there, every day they'll get 20 experience that goes past, they'll get 20 experience points, which doesn't sound like a lot, until you consider that every time you perform a mission, you're going to have, at least initially, a seven day period where you're letting all your pilots recover from the mission because they're fatigued. So you can get 20 experience points per day on every single one of those days, while they're recovering from their fatigue to get ready to be sent into the next mission. So those battle pods are really, or the training pods and simulators are really important in this. All right, contracts. All right, B team, that's going after Capellans. We can do something for the Turians, not super interested in that though. Yeah, definitely not interested in working for you against the Davians. Blackout mission. 210, 500,000. Alright, so uh, low gravity, foggy. Last week, radio comms with a strategic outpost was interrupted mid data stream to one of the remote relays. We've been unable to re establish contact. Our other units are all tied up, so we need you to make contact and get a sit rep. So, it's a reconnaissance mission that may have combat involved. I'm going to leave 162,000 on the table here and go for a, Actually, no, we should go for a 210. Against, it's against the Capellans again, we really want a 210. I need all the parts I can get. Although, the money is tempting. No, we'll go for a 210. We'll go for a 210. Although, what if they don't have a lot of mech deployment on this one? Now, 2.8 will take 162,000, because that's very close to probably what it's going to cost us for our month's expenditures, uh, expenses, and at the moment we're getting awfully close to cutting below that 1 million. Yeah, that's, we'll go that mix there. 162,000 and we'll go 2.8. Alright. This... Wait, what? Oh, shit, of course, we didn't actually... Ah, oh, I'm an idiot. I forgot to trigger a repair on the fire... St I haven't repaired any of our mechs. I am a moron. I completely forgot to do that, and we wasted time. Hey, boss. We've just completed those upgrades. All right, financial report is in three days. Contracts. Let's pick that contract up again. Hopefully it's still there. Blackout. Yep, that's the one. Negotiate. 162, 28. Accept. Perfect. Assassination, Firestarter, Falcon, Wasp. All right, so we... want Cerberus in the Assassin... I'll move drill bit into the fire starter and Grand Masker can drive the wasp. Mm. 
Oh, do we bring the Irby instead? Do we bring the Irby instead of the Wasp? The Wasp variant we've got is pretty good. Small laser, small laser, flamer. The Falcon, maybe instead of the Falcon? 480? 480, so they work out about the same. 240. Screw it, let's bring the Irby for a change. Grandmaster can drive the Irby. It gives us a little bit more tanking armor as well. And puts us a, gives us an AC-10 for the field. So, that is all set. Actually, it just reminds me, I could reconfigure the Urban Mech with the SLDF LBX-10. No, no, no. We'll, we'll, look and cons we'll consider that for the next mission. At the moment, I'm not sure there's anybody who could aim the friggin' thing properly anyway. All right. Let's deploy. Deploying the trash can. Urban shoddy. Yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I must have missed you saying that before, but yes, we could absolutely do that. We could absolutely do that. Oh, there, there it is at the top. Uh, uh, urban LBX mech. Yes, we could. The only issue is that's a really expensive gun. In fact, that gun's worth more than the Urby. <laughs> it's just straight up worth more. And uh, we don't have anybody who has a high enough gunnery skill to be able to aim it and reliably hit anything with it. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I'd be completely down for that idea. But we need somebody who can actually shoot straight first. And then I might consider it. Command interface initiated. It's the unprofessionals again. Pretty much, that's where we're at at the moment with these pilots. Uh, landing site secure. Let's do what we agreed, Commander. Scout out the data relay and take it from here. Good luck. Alright, so there's a target zone. Okay, let's go. And there's the Obi. <laughs> That's that's the Irby sprinting. Moving to position. It's all right. You'll catch up eventually. So how much wasted AC-10 ammo will be littering the countryside? Do we reckon? Uh, I'm saying six rounds. Oh, I think you're underestimating. You're underestimating the gunnery ability of these pilots. Yeah, I, I think they'll cut down a mountain with miss shots. Affirmative. You betcha. Affirmative. I read you, Commander. Moving out. Assuming the poor Irby can make the battlefield. No wonder the data stream was cut off. This place has been slagged. Maybe there's more we can find in the main compound. Looks fairly okay. Buildings don't look destroyed. Waiting on you, Commander. Uh... We we'll brace everybody here, and we let the Irby catch up. My neck. What can I do for you? Right, Commander. Got it. In turn five. So our next destination is. Wow, that's a long way away. All right, so we're at least jump jet equipped. A town or some kind of facility there. Facility on top of the hill. And we got this city structure, or uh, this small, um, small factory structure or something on the other side. Might be best just to go up. Yeah, go direct up over the top and then just jump down. That might be the fastest path. We've all got jump jets, even the Irby, so. Advancing, I guess. 
I read you, Commander. Moving out. Uh -huh. Why is the Urbi so slow? Uh, the Urban Mech uh, is well, it was, it was never designed for speed. It's a relatively light mech, but it's actually got some pretty there. heavy army okay. armor on it, and it's carrying uh -huh. a really, really, really big gun for its size. Location confirmed. Um, this version of the Urbi. Uh huh. I'll zoom in on it for you. This version of the Urbi is carrying an AC-10 on this arm. They're, the the Urbi itself is designed to carry up to an AC-20, so the biggest cannon you can get in the game, short of a gauze rifle, on that arm. And they were never designed to be fast in the first place. They're heavily armoured, carry a decent amount of firepower, but they were designed mainly for deployment in cities, so they're only walking around streets. They were uh, urban combat units, hence urban mech. And, uh, yeah, which means you don't need a lot of speed on them. Copy. Coordinates received. On but they're very way. cute. Got it. Oh, oh and I sneeze. Apo apologies. Ugh. Isn't there a short barreled AC 20 burst version? Oh, yeah. But basically, every auto cannon variant in the game has been fitted to an Urbi at one point or another. There are LBX shotgun versions. There are uh, burst cannon, short barrel burst cannon versions. There are proper AC-20 snipers, AC-10s. Don't need to tell me twice. Um, I think there's a variant that actually has two AC-5s mounted in the pod. Uh, sorry, probably should correct that. Two burst fire AC-5s mounted in the pod. Yeah, just for maximum amount mm -hmm. of um, spreading of the love and the shells all over the place. It's just what Herbies are built for. They'll also commonly have machine guns fitted to them, although I don't think this version does. They'll often have machine guns for pacifying crowds. Because, yes, it's that kind of mech, too. Uh, essentially, urban mechs were designed to crack tanks Good for now. Cooling down a bit. and pacify, uh, pacify or uh, down pin start. down. Cooling. Uh, insurgent groups or uh, uh, slow down with the. Got it. I hear you. Let's get the buddy. No, it's still gonna jump. Um, like insurgent groups or infantry divisions inside of an urban urban environment and keep them from causing too much in the way of issue. I think it's close enough. She'll catch up eventually. Moving to position. Let's move everybody else down here and trigger the next part of the mission. Urban pacification. It only has to be outpaced by a quick member of the unwashed hordes. Yeah, pretty much. Police mech with a bunch of blue lights on top. Yeah, they, they served as police. That's that's not even a joke. They there is, yes, lights on top, police versions. For urban like riot squad pacification um Kevin's fusiliers we weren't expecting to see you in one piece anyway what a sight for sore eyes welcome to the front lines front lines lucky us we've been sent by Davy into aid and assist how are you all doing in there what's the sit rep we first noticed our data streams were being interrupted then had the odd scout pro uh, uh, probe our defenses you arrived right on time for the main event it seems We've got contacts incoming. Alright, so we're being attacked. That's alright. Where are they coming from? Defend buildings. One must survive, four remain. Alright, so I've got to defend these buildings. And the enemy lance is coming from that direction. Oh, actually, this doesn't work out so bad. What can Let's... I do for you? If we sprint the Irby, it's going to take a turn or two, but we might be able to get got into it. the forest Next here where speed, we can no intercept shooting. from the side. That's not, that's not a bad position. What now? Ooh. Oh, okay. That that's that's much heavier than what we've got. Alright. Alright, this is uh this is this is the problem. There. That's a okay. griffin. Um 
Yeah, no, I took two salvage selection on this one. That's okay. We might get the parts for this. If we can kill it. But yeah, one, one of the major features of the Urban Mech Mad End is where the other mechs... Uh, where most mechs only have a limited torso twist capability, uh, the Urban Mech, at least in lore, is one of only a handful of mechs that's actually capable of fully rotating its torso like a turret on a tank. So it can be walking in one direction and it can aim its weapon systems at any direction that it wants surrounding it. 360 degree coverage. In this mod, I hear ya. Um, you don't have that, but you do have a bonus that increases its ability to torso twist and target max by an additional 180 degrees. So you have... Uh, it's, it's a pretty wide firing arc on it. Uh, one skull isn't messing around. No, no, it's not. And we have a secondary mech coming in. It's a Wolverine as well. So we've got a Griffin and a Wolverine. Yeah, these two mechs alone outweigh our entire lance. On my way! Tell me what to shoot! Yeah, this is... I'm listening. And we don't really oh, have any good places for cover here unless we get into those trees. Here you go. So help. It depends on how good that. Oh, they got a third mech coming in. It's a stinger. Okay, it's only a stinger. We're not too worried about that. That's in our weight class. And a fire starter. Alright, so they outweigh our lance by about 40 tons at least. Yeah, I'd say they've got a good 40, no, a bit more than that. Between 40 and 50 tons. Depending. Alright, we cannot let those two heavier mechs get in behind us, otherwise I we are you. screwed. And we've got to watch our fire too, because we've got a lot of weapons that'll spread. And we can't have the buildings destroyed. Alright, so we've got to get rid of the fire starter first. Firing everything. And then you aim like that. Oh god damn it. Waiting on you, Commander. Get me. All right, forty-four percent chance to hit the fire starter. Please, 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 don't miss. Well, what can I do for you? Right, drill bit turn. Keep the left arm facing. Take this. That almost hit another postcode. Yep. Yeah. Moving. Falcon mm -hmm. out in front. Firing at him. Right, we crit one of the flamers. I'm you didn't like that, did you? Yeah, hopefully their pilots are as bad as ours, and then all that firepower is just going to miss every time they pull the trigger anyway. Their mechs aren't damaged either, so these are proper... proper Capellan forces. So all their mechs are in mint condition, they're not lowly damaged mechs. Correct a building. Hey. Right. No sweat. 
Where? Move the urban mech in closer. Oh, that's better. We have a 69% chance to hit on the fire starter this time. Roger that. Firing on target. Destroyed the foot. When I shoot you, you'll take it and like it. So that'll slow its ground movement slightly. Hey, knock it off. Commander? On my way. Your turn. Right leg destroyed, right torso destroyed, right arm destroyed, pilot stress and a knockdown. I will take that. Actually, just thinking about it, it's a shame that I took the two raven parts now, because if I can get two parts out of this fire starter, I would have been able to rebuild the mech. What? No. I may have made a mistake out of that. Well, the raven is a raven. Moving to position. If I can get two more parts on the raven, it would be nice. Alright, let's... Please Target. pop the leg. For now for today. I guess not. Yeah. Yep. Sort of got to kick it while it's down. Lock it on and firn it all. Crit to oh the gyro, man, flame crit, the pilot's panicked, but the pilot isn't ejecting. Alright, they've destroyed one building already. We lose, we got three remaining, one must survive. If we lose all of them, we fail the mission. And pilot bailed out. Alright, so we've got the base turrets on our side. That's what's firing at the moment. So at the very least, we've got a little bit of extra firepower from the base itself. We're going to have to do some of this work on our own. Alright, when the fire starter's dealt with... Hey. So now... Griffin, Wolverine. Probably Griffin next target. All right. Good to go. All weapons are go. Oh, and we ended up damage winning the buildings on our own. That's what I needed to watch out for, because we will get... Right here. Mm-hmm. We'll get that happening if we're not careful. Uh, let's do a jump. Probably turn here. That Confirm. should avoid any additional problems. Here it goes! All right, I hear you. Grandmaster. Get down as far as there. Moving out. Alright, seventy-four percent. Alright, that's probably the highest accuracy of anybody that's actually in our group at the moment in terms of aiming. Affirmative. And somehow missed even though he hit on the animation. Okay. Trying to pop the turrets. It's two buildings destroyed. As I said, this is why I didn't want to turn any of the difficulty options once you hit that one uh, point one di uh, uh, one point zero difficulty level at the start. It's because the RNG is more than going to make up for the fact that I didn't turn everything on. I'm here. 
the combination I picked was designed to still be fun without turning ridiculous, because the RNG is just going to RNG because it's RNG. Hey. That's, that's what it does. Copy. Come on. Okay. Yeah, we really need to reconfigure this assassin. It just has no firepower. Like the bonuses it's got are really nice and all. Waiting for orders. But if it if it doesn't have any weapons or doesn't have sufficient weapons to hit the target, we gotta get rid of that LRM out of it. So that's actually fairly decent there. Commander. Roger that. Here goes everything. Alright, that was a better hit. LRM ammo destroyed, right that torso destroyed, right arm network. destroyed. Pilot injured due to an internal ammo explosion. Ah, there we go. That's what, what we can want. I do for you? Affirmative. Alright, Grandmaster, do something impressive. You betcha. Miss him. Well done. Get you next time. Left arm and left torso destroyed from a single hit. Turret destroyed. Irby got to get closer. Uh, no, it's not going to help with it. The, the AC is a longer range weapon. And there is actually penalties for getting closer. So the Irby's actually got one of the highest chances to hit on most of its weapons at the moment. Because it's at near optimal range. If we get, the, get it too close with the AC-10, it's not I actually going to get higher. It'll start getting lower. It's just RNG. See, we've moved in close and we're down to 49%. So we dropped from 75 to 49% chance to hit. So by getting close up, we've actually got to stay further back. Tell me what to Although, as I say that, he actually finally manages to land a shot enough that the Griffin pilot panics and bails out. See, RNG is a troll. RNG is a troll. No, that's that's good. That's good. The pilot bailed out. He's gone. That's what's going to happen more in this one. You don't so much kill mechs because the mod doesn't have pilots as being suicidal dickheads. They won't ride a mech that's being ripped to shreds. They'll bail out. If, you, if you're seriously blowing chunks out of them and there's nothing they can do about it, the pilots Fire will bail the out. Jump, um, that does not mean, however, that you get to recover the mech. If the pilot ejects, it destroys the head, which means all automatically you can only get, at best, two parts out of the mech on recovery. You cannot straight recover the mech. And we've just landed in the wrong point there. And keep in mind, in this one you need four parts. I could have set it to require eight parts of a mech to actually recover a mech, but we're currently set to four. So we need four bits rather than three to actually put a mech together. Um, I guess... What damage we lost? Oh, of course we did. We could have lost the LRM-5, the mech the weapon that I want to yank out of this thing. No, we lost the SRM. Because probably the best weapon that we had for this particular mech. I'm there. Commander? Right, drill bit. Firing everything I've got. Right, Twelve heat, jump jets destroyed. That's a critical hit. Oof. I 
waiting on you, Commander. Yeah, we really want... actually... From there, the Irby should have surprisingly good with 74 and 49 going for the Stinger. Yeah, we fire on the Wolverine. 74% chance to hit. That's right on optimal for the AC-10. Here it comes! Uh, well, he hit. 60 damage to a leg. Yes, Commander. Oh. Now... about there. Basically only fighting with one, yeah, no. Commander. About mm -hmm, there I'm should going. be able to get the rear arc. Uh, not quite close Got enough, the just the medium on, laser. God, we're lacking so much fire power. Uh, right, that should be... pretty close to optimal for the fire starter. Fire starter is the only thing I've got at the moment that has decent firepower. That was actually a good hit. So the Wolverine took that person. Oh, and Wolverine's getting into the side that's already damaged on the uh, assassin. Light hit. All right, hip destroyed. So the stinger might be about to go down. I think the base's defensive turrets just shot down one of its or destroyed one of its own buildings. Right here. 59, surprisingly 64% on the Stinger. We're actually going to take a shot at the Stinger with the Urbamech, because it might be enough to one-shot kill it. Special delivery. Right, torso destroyed, pilot injured. Yeah, critical hit. I only stressed it. Good to go. Lucky that building was already destroyed, turret was only doing cleanup. Yeah, that's fair. Um, we have to do a jump. We get rear arc. Right, Commander. Get for that rear armor on the Wolverine. Hip destroyed. Twelve heat on target. Critical hit, Commander. Yeah. Alright, Hulk will do the same thing from the same... No, Hulk won't do the same thing from the same point. Hulk is going to move. Get close enough to get the rest of those weapons into play. About there, I reckon. Here we go, two smalls and two MGs. Take this! Mm -hmm. Alright, right torso destroyed, right arm destroyed. Score Pilot injured. Hit. Pilot's unsettled. Cool. Yes, Commander. Now I need... Uh, let's do a jump. Need to present front right. And keep back, because this mech's being targeted, and it's going to be easy to kill soon. Engaging. Pilot's panicking, but not bailing out. Uh, engine destroyed. Pilot incapacitated. Alright, so that's the stinger out of play. Now we just have to break the Wolverine. I hear ya. Which is a mech we really should have in our collection, considering the uh, 
the nature of the pilot's name. Got it. Uh, miss. Stand still while I'm attacking you. Commander? About. Got it. Yeah. Got it. One of those enemies is right off target. SRM explosion, nine heat. Critical hit. All right, that's killed most of its weapons, I think. Yeah. All right, I think we've got this. This is everything I got. I think I hit. Yeah, pilot failed. Oh. That was a lot more tonnage than I was expecting to have to deal with on this mission. Mission successful. Oh, that was actually rather stressful itself. Didn't think it'll work out. No, you can pull it off. You just got to hit the right stuff. The the good advantage of the light mechs, they're lacking in firepower, and these ones here because they're stock and I haven't had the parts to mess with them, very much even more so lacking in firepower, and their weapon systems are really you know um, not optimized for the way I play. But they're all jump capable. And they're all really fast. They've all got high evasion bonuses because they're small light mechs. So heavier mechs have trouble hitting them. If they get hit, it's going to hurt. But they have trouble hitting them. Those evasion bonuses are really powerful. And the jump jets mean you can constantly get into the rear arc of enemy mechs. So providing you can keep exploiting that... Um, you pull them apart. Well, it's the same way if you're playing MechWarrior Online or MechWarrior 5. What do you do if you encounter a heavy mech and you're in a lighter mech and you've got to deal with it? You get behind it and you shoot it in the ass. Alright, so everybody shared the kills. Yes, because everybody had to. We got some repairs to do on the Assassin. Now, yeah, Griffin, 55 tons. Only got one part of the Wolverine as an option. Yeah, we're taking the two parts of the Griffin. So that is not bad. We need two more, so we need to encounter another Griffin and get this uh, get this good with it. We also got the one part of the Wolverine and one part of the Stinger, which I don't really care about too much. I want to go up in tonnage, not sideways. So. I didn't actually check how much XP our pilots got for that either. We'll have to quickly run through and see exactly how well they're doing. Uh, we're going to need some mech repairs before our next contract boss. Can't go into combat like this. Yeah, that's right. We need a basically a week to get our pilots sorted out anyway. Alright, so everything else is fixed up. It's just the assassin. So let's fix all. We lost three jump jets and an SRM-2. Well, we can replace the SRM-2, but I don't really want to. We have no weapons here, though, is the problem. Uh, equipment... We do have the replacement jump jets that are needed. Alright, so we can revert this to standard configuration. It'll take 10 days. But we just, yeah, this. Uh, what else can we do with it?
If I could find two tons, I could mount a snub PPC in this thing's arm. Which could be interesting. A unique modification of a standard particle projector cannon. The snub PPC utilizes the same energy acceleration but with a shortened range and a cluster of smaller projectiles. Like the standard model, snub PPC shots impact a deliberating uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, EM effect that degrades the firing capacity at, of the target. Like, yeah, you, we could do it. You'd have to pull the LRM5 and its ammo. The medium laser would have to go. We can keep the SRM2, but that also means we've got a snub PPC sitting out on the arm of a mech that's particularly vulnerable, which I'm not a super huge fan of. Yeah, we'll spend the 121,000 to get this thing bolted back together, and that's about all we're going to be able to do for the moment. Right. I'll get it in the schedule. And that's all of our, uh, well that's got us back down to a million and we've got a financial report in three days so we're about to drop below a million and there's not much we can do about it. Contracts, what else do we have that we could potentially do? Base capture killing capellans. We only need to send one of our mech warriors for this one. And it's going to be a whole bunch of theirs on the base capture. Alright, we might do that actually. We might do that just for complete the one skull and we'll be dealing with their mechs and their mech warriors. Might send the fire starter and one of our guys. That's really the last mission here before we move on to a new world. Yes, Commander. Server 64. Waiting for orders. Waiting for orders. Right, Grandmaster got some good hits, so he got 400. Well, it seems a waste to spend money, uh, spend points. I suppose he earned them, he earned them. That's fair. A three Make gunnery. Training complete. Commander. Uh, Hulk. Hulk definitely wants three. Although you're going to be a Training replacement complete. as well. Um, hiring hall. What mech warriors are available on world? Alright, so we have Booger. 2223. Uh, unstable, hot end under pressure, plus one melee hit chance, negative one melee defense. Uh, Commander. Crackle, Lao survivor. Not everyone can meet the requirements for civic service and become a citizen of the Confederation. For those who fail, life of a, a servitor is the barest step above chattel slavery. No bonuses for or against that pilot. Good to go. Yeah, we, uh, we're not good enough to hire these guys. Good to go. Although, that, one, that one's a commander. Receiving you. Enlisted Navy recruit. Hired killer. Ex-military spacer criminal. Yeah, probably not what we're after. Voltage. Uh, Davian Poor. No bonuses. Whiplash. That, hey, that's interesting. Lucky, plus two LRM clustering. That could be really useful putting together an LRM mech. Having a dedicated uh, LRM support pilot. If I had... Yeah, if I had a dedicated LRM support, uh, LRM mech at the moment, I might actually grab that pilot, but uh, not much use at the moment. We'll have to wait till later. 
Yeah, now I just need a boat. Ready yep. To go over financials whenever you are. That's the problem. All right, so it's down to 822. Yeah, we'll keep that as it is. Let our pilots rotate through, and we're going to have to take some money. Black market inventory. Oh, not now. And if I say no to this, I won't see another offer for 12 months. Fuck it. Black market in the periphery. This was bad timing. I can't... I can't really say no. I need access to the black market. That was hurting me the entire way through the last campaign that we played. 500,000. Yeah, screw it. We're paying the 500,000 so we can get access to the black market. But it just means the next couple of missions that I do, I'm going to have to take full money. I can't afford to take salvage. I don't have a choice. Because otherwise I'm not going to be able to keep repair 322. And it's about 210 for the maintenance of our mech. So we have literally one month that we can afford to pay before we go bankrupt. And that's assuming we don't have to deal with repairs. Alright, so Claymore's still out of action for 15 days. Financial report in 26. Contracts. The B team. Will be the last mission we do on this world before we leave. Torian Concordant, Low Gravity Dawn Dust. We're training a group of mech warriors to act as a local defense force. I don't know why there's a local defense force being run by the Turians on a Davian world, but okay. Um, we'd like you to assist in their training. There's a decommissioned compellent base that we need to take ownership of. It's undefended. I'm sure it's undefended. This is a perfect opportunity for our trainees to practice operating as a team in a low-risk environment. Blah, 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 blah. Yep, negotiate. 493. It almost covers the cost of what we just had to pay. And we'll get two randomly assigned mech parts out of it. But I'm not sure one of these missions is actually going to give us a lot anyway, because we're only sending one pilot. Alright, so we are going to take a fire starter, because that is our best mech at the moment. And who is going to drive it? Claymore's still injured. Yeah, I think Cerberus will drive it. Yeah, we'll keep we'll keep yeah we'll keep keep Cerberus in it because we're keeping Cerberus as a pilot. All right, and we're being sent in with a commando, a panther, and an urban mech. Two two three one. Oh, that's terrible. Three two two. Okay, that's the panther should be able to shoot straight. One two one three on the urban mech. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> And pick the lesser of two evils. Yeah, well, that's basically what I've got at the moment. You know, I, I, I'm not fond of the Turians, but I, I will work for them for money. But yeah, this this is the last uh, mission on this planet. Now, if, if we hang around for like a month, new missions would cycle through on the planet, and old missions would disappear, and we'd get new ones. But it's better we're gonna fire up the uh, fire up the engines and. Head on our way and see what we can find. Command interface initiated. Just a training mission. Yeah, it's it's just like all the other just a training missions, right? So all we gotta do is just walk in there and stand around. The job sounds like bullshit to me. I wanna learn how to shoot, not stand around. I got a funny feeling you're gonna have the chance. I don't know, the mission sounds good to me. I need more practice driving this thing anyway. Alright, let's confirm the base is undefended, Commander. Move up to this location and you should be able to see get eyes on the base. Can we blow up some of the buildings? Uh. It's like a, uh, it's like a pug team in War Thunder. 
I copy. 10 4. Um, oh, okay, they do not have jump jets. Oh, this is some really shitty terrain to have to navigate with no jump jets. Which way are we supposed to go then? That's the base. Unless I guess they want us to go around the back. Moving out. Alright. Copy. Acknowledged. Aye. We might lose some grunts. Well, they're, they're not my grunts, so I'm not okay, too concerned with that. So long as we pass the mission objectives. Their I'm losses are not our losses, so I'm not... I'm away. No, I'm, I'm not heartbroken. They're only Turians. There's a base up ahead. Look how our employ, uh, employer wasn't kidding. It's empty. That sucks. Can we shoot some of the buildings anyway? I'm picking up engine signatures, boss. I'm guessing those aren't friendlies and they're heading your way. Engines, like mech engines. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. I don't want to die. Get your lance into that base commander and hold out to our employer. Can get some more people on the ground. Advancing, I guess. Roger. Rolling. Aye. Moving to position. On the move. Moving to position. I'm there. Irby's going to take a little while. Now. Space. Seem to be indicating the mechs were coming from down south, so. Affirmative. Spin the sensors that way, see so if we can actually see them. Heads up, Commander. You've got hostile contacts inbound. Alright, so we got a wasp. Unsure what the other one is. How's it going? Right, commando is going to be blocked hard. Location confirmed. So the commando can head for the base. Ooh, cicada. I take that as an upgrade at the moment. Alright, let's stay in the tree line. I'm let's going. not give up our bonuses for the moment. Affirmative. And he hit with his weapons. I'll take that. No. I love the jump jets on this thing. Yeah, here we go. Okay, firing everything. Uh, gyro crit on the wasp. But that hurts. Standing by. Pontoon is in the urban mech. Funnily enough, we'll received. probably have better aim from the tree line. 42. Eh. Engaging target. Yeah, miss. Sailed over its head, took out a tree. Negative damage. Some Repeat. poor forest sitting in his damage. house just had his house explode. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think this is going to be my last mission, guys. I'm getting a little fady here at the moment. All right, let's keep the fire up on on this buddy wasp here. All right. Damn it! I was hoping that would crack the armor. Help! I'm getting blanked. Hey there. All right. Commando in the base. Ready for orders. Now we want to back off. Touch with the PPC. Confirm. And missed, 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 missed. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. I'm here. Alright, let's Location keep confirmed. the close range on the Overmech. I can see other weapon in. We're down a 27% chance to hit on the AC-10. We get the small laser in as well. I'm not sure that's worth the difference. We really need to probably pull the uh, the Irby back. I'm taking internal damage. Hey. I may regret this. Out there. There we go, that's got some good hits. Critic. And pile it out. And that is 50% of the enemy reinforcements destroyed. Okay, so that means the cicada is the only other mech we've got on the I'm field. I'm receiving you. That's useful to know. Acknowledged. Take this. All right. Orders. Let's hop scotch the cicada and hit it from behind. Hopefully, hit it with the PPC. It'll feel that. Yes. Right torso, right arm destroyed. That was a Boarding good hit. critical hit. Waiting for orders. Heading out. Good hit from the Greenhorn, yeah. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll take that. I'd rather take his mech, to be perfectly honest, but... Panther's a good mech. Panther would be really useful right now. Panther would be ideal for our weight class. I'm here. It's a damn shame the game just won't let me okay. uh, just flog the mechs from these guys. Alright, now Wait best for order. bet... Much further can I get? Hopefully that'll be enough to get the bonus on the AC-10 back up. Ah, it's still only 42. Target locked. Yeah, I think that pilot's 42 is about as high as it's yep, actually commander. going to get. Lifting off. Alright, let's see if we can do it again. Locking in. We can. Engine destroyed. Let's it down. Alright. The Greenhorns all survived. Well, that certainly was an experience. Darius, I think we should get hazard pay for these kinds of missions. Alright. Mission successful. And we got paid. Hopefully we get a bit of a bonus. No, no bonuses. All right, payout, 479. We get a bit more on the review board. We're up to 32 at the moment. Don't really care about any of their pilots all that much. Cerberus only gets 40. God damn it. 
All right, but our random rewards, we picked up one part of the cicada and one part of the wasp. So at least we got the mech components out of it. Can't complain too much about that. All right, and that will bring us to just about to a close. So I'll have a look. I don't think we took too much. Actually, I don't think we took any damage. Assassin's under repair. Looks like one of the jump jets on the commander on the fire starter was damaged. So if we just repair all, it was destroyed. Okay, fair enough. I did not realize. We'll jam another one. In there, while we're at it, let's move that MG ammo down to the legs, because what the fuck is that doing in my torso? Alright, so, 35-35, everything is good. What do we do? Hmm. Severe, can I get a 5-1 check on our current position? Let's drop the rear armor down to 15. That gets us up to 65. Go 20 for the center. Like it's a 75 in the front. That's better. Ideally, I want to push the armor up on this a little bit more. Actually, ideally, I want to push the heat up on this any, uh, a little bit more. Although that only leaves us with two standard weapons. Hmm. I was just contemplating yanking the MG ammo out, which weighs one ton. And the machine guns, which weigh half a ton each, so that brings us up to two. I can then swap out and put two more flamers into the mech and it would fit perfectly. So six flamers in a fire starter. That... I'll have to sit on that one for a moment. It's not a bad idea. But it makes the right. mech very I'll dependent. The MGs don't do a lot of damage. But if we take the MGs away, the only direct fire damage weapons that we have are the two medium lasers. The... The flamers will be more effective on worlds where or against mechs that have overheating issues or on worlds where heat uh, where sinking reduction is actually reduced I'll have to have a think about that one but that's that's high on the priority maybe pull the MGs out and whack two more in and then possibly as much as I love the jump range on it possibly pull one of the Pull one of the jump jets, maybe two, so I can max out the armor on the arms and legs. And make it a little tanky little bastard. Just so I've got something that can absorb the damage at the moment. Alright, so... That's about everything there done. There won't be much to do in the mech bay, I don't think, because we... Right here. I only got 40 points for that. Yep, so we got nothing there that we can upgrade and nothing else would change because we don't have the training modules in place yet. Which I can actually do because that's really important that we have those. And they're only 90,000. Right, I'll get the team on it right away. Alright, build them. We need them. Navigation, star map. And we need to select our next location to go because we haven't had really any offers. Um, 
we do actually do have a travel contract. What have we got? Travel contact for travel control. Oh, no, it's three skull. No, 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 That's not happening. Okay, that is not happening at all. Thank you very much for the offer, but uh, we're, we're about 100 tons worth of mechs away from that yet, at least. Uh, best option. Let's look for the half skulls for the moment, because that's just what we've got to deal with. That one there, what do we got? Medium gravity planet, moons, primitive civilization. Eh. It was wiped out during the Third Succession War. So that's actually recently destroyed world, that one. Well, recently, quote unquote. The Third Succession War went for a little while, so. That's one and a half. Small, dry, Earth-like planet with approximately half the gravity of Earth. The planet was covered once in an enormous ocean. There are only two small continents, each no larger than any... The planet is covered in it. Okay. What's the other one? That's 32 days to get there, 31 days to get here. Agriculture, aquaculture, Arctic world, inner sphere level civilization... five days to get there I'm mainly thinking about our next set of payments alright so what do we got on difficulty level 1 we can probably take a couple of those if we're careful right, there's some options here that are closer 26 actually that's not a huge difference 26 Yeah, I think we're going to have to stay to a point of 0 0.5 for the half-scale worlds for the moment. But 25 days, they're not a huge amount different. Um, I think we'll take this one. It's going to take us 33 days to get there, which means it's going to blow out a month's payment again. But hopefully there'll be some stuff there on the border. Well, that's Capellan space, so I don't... Yeah, actually, no. No, we'll go for one skull. We'll go for one skull, because I don't really want to go. I just realised it's Capellan space, and I don't want to go to bloody Capellan space. Alright, 26 days. Ice world. That'll do. Yeah, we'll do there. 90,000 to get there. Oh, this Roger is going to be cutting us fine on cash. This is cutting us awful fine on cash. Job's done, Commander. Yep, financial report is due the same day we arrive on Sadar. So that'll be 210, we'll be down to about 500,000, and then we're just going to have to make all the money we can on this world. I might even not. I might not even have the option of being too flexible about exactly who I'm going to be working for. I'm just going to have to take whatever is on offer. Those upgrades you asked for are online. Commander. On the upside, at least for every single day that passes from this point on, our mech warriors are going to be earning 20 experience. So now they should start leveling at a fairly decent rate. Alright, and we finally have Claymore back uh, back in action. So our highest skill pilot, my main pilot, my main character at the moment. And we're in system. And so the... Uh, the, tr the trivia for the, uh, the name of my group, McEvities, and the name of my main character, McEvity, Sarah McEvity was the last... Oh, well, technically second last 
Khan of Clan Wolverine that was annihilated. Uh, the story for Clan Wolverine is after it was annihilated because they got a little bit too democratic for the clan's liking, uh, was that a small number of survivors actually managed to escape back to the Inner Sphere and disappeared amongst the Inner Sphere. But several clans, including Clan Ghost Bear and Clan Wolf, have essentially uh, unending uh, blood feuds against all of the original blood names for all of the original founders of Clan Wolverine. And McEvity's is one of them. So it's not obviously not modelled in the game, but if it was, finding out that a pilot has the last name McEvity, regardless of whether or not they're a survivor of Clan Wolverine or a McEvity that never actually went into exile into clan space in the first place, would be grounds for the entire clan to essentially attack whatever unit it is in and ignore all other honour aspects to annihilate them. So, I just thought it would be a little bit of fun to put the uh, McEvity's name on the character, actually bring Clan Wolverine into uh, into the game, or as a, at the very least, the blood name lines up, and then uh, make sort of a, uh, a faction that's a 210. Just pay for that. We've arrived at our destination, Commander. We'll visit the store and see if there's anything there. Uh, make a character that's uh, essentially a minor faction of the uh, the Northwind Highlanders. Alright, so, once again, we're on a planet that has nothing in the stores at all. And we are going to end it here. I just want to actually have a little bit of a look and see exactly what we've got in the way of contracts. All right, so we have... And... Oh. That's a little too high for us. Target acquisition. Night foggy. Past you've been gathering sensitive research data. They've notified us they're ready. No, 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 no. It depends on whether or not we can disengage without destroying mechs. If we can, it's entirely possible we could actually complete one of those. Uh, yeah, two and a half skull, escort mission. Yeah, hell no. Hell no. Uh, polar recovery, that we could pull off. A solo duel, one skull. We have a battle mech causing us trouble. They call themselves Killbox. I'd rather a bigger mech, but we could pull that off. Intercepted medivac, ambush convoy, ugh. And a straight battle polar. Alright, we can pull we can pull some of this off. I think we can pull off some stuff here. I think we'll be okay. But that will be for next time. Uh, Tuppy the Ducky, clan of brains, brains are simple. They see a name that upsets them, and they put them into an ape-like rage. Well, th there's a little more to it than that. Um, technically, technically, the person who pla replaced Sarah McEvity uh, did kind of nuke a couple of the clan's worlds. Yeah, that, that was actually the thing that triggered off the Annihilation. Uh, Sarah McEvity was the, the Khan of the clan, and uh, she was trying to buy time for the Wolverines to evacuate, because I believe... What was the clan that was really out for them? Hel house Horses? No, not House Horses. Clan Snow Raven was one of the few clans that was actually friendly with Wolverine. Um, trying to remember the name of the clan that was really pushing for it. There was one of the clans that might have been Diamond Vipers. There was one that was really, really, really pushing, that, that did not like the fact that uh, Wolverine was essentially trying to make a democratic clan rather than... The, the regular clan layout, which is a... Uh, I'm not sure what the best way to describe it is. It's uh, it's not 
technically totalitarian in how it operates, but the clans are very communist in how they function. It's uh, I, I, I'm not entirely sure which way would be the best way to describe it. They have some some odd. Uh, they're, they're, they ran in an odd way, and they really didn't like what was happening with Clan Wolverine. So they were trying to uh, the the Khan Sarah McEvity was trying to uh, trying to basically buy time with the Clan councils, while Wol- the Wolverine chapters were actually pulling all of their civilians out, loading them onto ships. They've been quietly collecting all of the transports and jump ships that were used during the Exodus that had been abandoned. This was, I think, about. 50 or 100 years after the Exodus, and were trying to get their people back to the Inner Sphere on the sly. And, yeah, push came to shove, and uh, a couple of the clans wanted blood, and so the second in charge, who eventually became the Khan, became the Khan of the clan and the last Khan of Clan Wolverine, uh, took a commandeered a warship and proceeded to nuke... Uh, half a dozen of the clan worlds, including the home world of Clan Snowraven, the only friends that Clan Wolverine had. And um, that's what triggered triggered the Trial of Annihilation. Apparently the clans just really don't like having their home worlds nuked. They took it very personally. And wholesale genocide of every uh, every single Clan Wolverine warrior they encountered. They kept the civilians that they caught, but essentially turned them into slaves. The clans didn't have slaves, but they were essentially slaves. And to make sure that none of the civilian bloodlines for Clan Wolverine could breed, before they were allowed to work, they chemically castrated all of them to make sure they were annihilated. So the only survivors were those that escaped prior to this happening. All of their hardware was divided up between the other clans. They all had bids on it all. And a couple of the clans now have honor-bound blood feuds. Uh, well, not honor-bound blood, blood feuds. Uh, like, uh, honor-bound bl- uh, blood pact to the clans where they have promised that at any point in time they encounter anybody who is of Clan Wolverine heritage, regardless of whether or not they were actually involved in the Exodus or not, uh, they are to be destroyed. There's actually a nov- one of the novels for the Battletech universe is actually, I think it's Clan Ghost Bear because Clan Ghost Ghost Bear has a, is one of the clans that has a um, like an, an is is honor bound to annihilate any Wolverines they encounter, and they run into I think it's the Ebon bloodline. I think it was Ebon. I think it was Ebon. Uh, it's, it's one of the Clan Wolverine bloodlines, the founding bloodlines. Anyways, but it's not somebody that escaped from the from clan space. It's the when the Exodus happened, there were two brothers of this bloodline. One went with Kerensky and went joined the Exodus and became part of the clans. The other stayed in the Inner Sphere, and it's the descendants of the brother that stayed in the Inner Sphere. But the clan goes, but the, this clan, um, like this Lance, uh, the uh, clan star for Ghost Bear just goes batshit and starts chasing them through the inner sphere to try and murder them because of their last name. That's... The clans took that shit pretty seriously. Uh, They saw people identifying as Blackwatch during Operation Bulldog and zeroed in on them at the detriment to their own defences. Yep. Uh, I think it might have been Smoke Jaguars again. Actually, yeah, it could have been Smoke Jaguars. Uh, it was one of them. Smoke Jaguars, uh, the the clans that have the um, that have the blood feud. It's Smoke Jaguars, Ghost Bear, uh, Clan Wolf, uh, the Wolf Crusaders specifically. Uh, blood uh, uh, Snow Raven, Clan Snow Raven. I don't think Jade Falcon does. There might be another one as well. Yeah, there's a there's a couple of them that uh, that yeah that they they took the whole thing very personally and continue to do so. Um, and then there's a little bit more to it than that as well. But yeah, that's a just an interesting way to how the uh, the clan minds work. So, anyways, having the last name McEvity on my pi- on my mech warrior, 
that being announced in front of the clan should be like you know waving a giant red flag at a bull <laughs> it's it's not set up in the game in the mod to actually do that but in law that's what it would be like doing just guaranteed the clans would go nuts trying to get to my ship to kill me um but yeah anyways that was fun a little war law dump at the end this was a good stream thank you very much for watching it's now 3 20 in the morning so sorry if i'm a bit yawny and a bit fady at the moment i'm gonna go put my head on a pillow and go to sleep now but uh this was a decent start we definitely 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 need to get some more tonnage in this bay though um and we or, or at the very least we need some parts so we can start modifying these mechs because some of these aren't terrible but we just need to get some work done to them because they're kind of not great now. This assassin, for example, needs to be overhauled badly. But that'll have to happen on the next stream. Anyways, guys, good night, sweet dreams, have a good one, and I will catch you all next time.